a lot of green bills were flying around against the backdrop of columns of numbers and letter symbols. The band notes depicted a historical figure, and their face value was 100 million. Several system windows have appeared. The most powerful divine system has been launched. Today's random reward has arrived in the account. Congratulations to the owner for receiving ritual money, also known as Minbai, worth 1 million. This money can only be used after death. At the moment, the balance is 9 trillion 755 billion ritual money. The first quest was the first expenditure, and the content of the task stated that the total expenditure was more than 100,000 yuan. The quest had not yet been completed. A guy named Ling Yui just woke up and scratched his head. He had black hair and red eyes and was wearing a white t-shirt. Ling Yui muttered something dissatisfied under his breath, and then sat down on the edge of the bed. His bedroom looked neat and clean. He put on his gray slippers and headed somewhere, wearily running his hand through his hair. Above his head was a system window that showed his ritual money balance of 9 trillion. Three years have passed since he rose from the dead, and then the system started up. Ling Yui ordered the balance system window to close, and then entered the bathroom. He began to wash his hands, while looking at his tired face in the mirror. The guy thought about how he was not only resurrected, but also given a divine system, which made him think that it was very similar to the idea that he didn't have to struggle with difficulties to succeed in life. While the guy was washing his face with cold water, a balance of money appeared above his head again. Ling Yui thought that he could only use them after death, but he didn't want to die again. His face looked exhausted, his eyebrows drooped, and his eyes looked down tiredly. Somewhere in the distance the sound of drops of blood could be heard. Ling Yui looked up and his eyes widened in surprise. Scarlet drops of blood began to appear on the mirror, which became more and more numerous. After a few moments, the drops seemed to begin to form into letters, which shocked the guy. He was taken aback and began to back away from the mirror, not understanding what was happening. A dialogue box appeared from the blood on the mirror, congratulations. You have become the owner of the fifth part of the internal beta version of the game in the cool thriller genre. The countdown to the start of the quest has begun, 15 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Ling Yui's face twisted into a grimace of horror. He opened his mouth slightly, lowering its corners, and could not believe what was happening. Drops of water were still running down his face. Ling Yui realized that this was not a hint from that divine system because it automatically appeared in his mind, and even without seeing it, he could understand whether it was her or not, and the text of this thriller game was foreign. He walked closer to the mirror and pointed his index finger at her. He touched the bloody inscription with his finger. He was terribly scared, after which he furrowed his brows and his pupils shrank. He felt as if death was hunting him again. Ling Yui seemed to feel himself falling into the mouth of a terrible creature that had three rows of huge fangs. The guy removed his finger from the mirror and looked at it. The drop of blood that gave off a burgundy aura gave off an eerie, cold and strange smell. It was familiar to him, which is why he anxiously continued to look at the bloody finger. It was the smell of death. Ling Yui gritted his teeth and tried to calm down. He understood that tomorrow at 12 am the time would come to enter the terrible game. The guy looked again at the invitation to the game written on the mirror, touching the inscription. His face began to look emotionless and calm. He realized that since it said in scarlet letters that he was in the fifth part, then this thriller had existed for a long time. The guy decided to read what they were writing about it on the internet, and find news and articles about the beta test of a thriller game in a search engine. A lot of news about this game has appeared on the screen lately. There was news about the strange death of the richest man, about the escape of a serial killer, about the disappearance of the owners of the community. All of them were united by the fact that they were rumored to be participating in a thriller game. Ling Yui, with a thoughtful expression on his face, leafed through it all in search of the information he needed. He found what he needed. He began to read the information on the forum in surprise. In a note from a thriller game insider published three days ago, there was an appeal to the player. He wrote that if he received an invitation written in blood, then, unfortunately, he could only report that this thriller game really exists. Ling Yui continued reading the note with a worried expression. Mysterious events around the world are the results of the return of thriller game players. The new official investigation center number 9 has been created to deal with these thriller games. Ling Yui imagined in his head the building of this center, which was immersed in an ominous red light, and a huge eye looked down at it from above. Those whom the game chooses will find themselves in a world full of evil spirits, and will be killed by them if they violate the rules of the quest. The guy's imagination depicted how a huge monster was stretching its hands towards its next victim, preparing to eat it, and there were many corpses of people around. 
Next to them stood a monster who was chopping people with an axe. In every quest, at least half of the people die. Their skulls were placed in one pile. However, survivors can also gain the ability to control the ghosts and souls of the dead in the game. Ling Yui imagined himself surrounded by evil spirits who looked up and growled angrily, but were subservient to the guy. The author of the note ended his message with the words that it depends only on the player whether he will live or die, after which he wished him good luck. Ling Yui's panic gave way to self-confidence. His face was illuminated by the dim light from the monitor, and he grinned. He said that if there are ghosts in the game world, then most likely they may appear in the real world in the future. He wondered if maybe this was actually a good thing, because he could take the beta test and gain the power to fight ghosts and monsters before anyone else. Ling Yui looked at the ritual money balance above his head again. He sat at his desk and happily remembered that he had a system through which his chances of survival should be higher. He suggested that even the so-called ritual money system may have arisen thanks to this game in the afterlife. Ling Yui folded his hands in front of him and bit his thumb with a satisfied smirk on his face. He understood that, in the end, he could not rely too much on external factors, because in order to survive, he must take advantage of every opportunity. The black wristwatch was ticking, showing 11.50 p.m. Ling Yui looked at them and exhaled tiredly. He did everything he could with such a short preparation time. The guy was dressed in a white shirt, black pants and sneakers, but the main detail of his image was a black raincoat with red fabric on the inside. The clock continued ticking until the hands showed 12 a.m. The room began to plunge into an ominous red light as Ling Yui looked down. He realized that it had all begun. The floor under his feet seemed to crack and break, which caused bewilderment in the guy. He began to fly down the dark abyss, surrounded by red letters and numbers. Several system windows have appeared, welcome to the thriller game. Name of the current quest, Hotel of the Underworld. Mission goal, work hard and survive for two days. Survivors in the current quest, 6. Ling Yui continued to fall, but there was no horror or fear on his face. He looked very calm. The guy landed after some time on a paved road. He raised his gaze and examined his surroundings. The sky was orange-red. All the trees were dry and had no leaves. Red lanterns with a grimace of horror were hung throughout the entire underworld hotel. Nearby were dilapidated buildings in traditional Chinese style. Other people began to appear around Ling Yui and were surprised by this. Among them were a middle-aged man in glasses and a formal suit, a young guy with blonde hair, a menacing man with scars on his arm, an attractive girl with purple hair, and a frightened young girl with pink hair. They all looked around the game's surroundings. A guy with blonde hair wondered if this was really a horror game, and an attractive girl exclaimed that the atmosphere was creepy and she didn't know if she could survive here. Ling Yui looked at them and realized that they were the other players of this quest. The menacing man folded his hands on his chest and said that, apparently, this time everyone was new, except him. He had short hair and a thick beard, and was wearing a green sweatshirt. An attractive girl in a white tight dress asked in her sweet voice if this was his first time here. The man responded positively and said that he was in the fourth group of beta players who completed such a copy once every half month, and now he is on the fifth. All the players listened to him carefully. The girls exclaimed in amazement, looking dreamily at him. Suddenly the man showed them his hand, which was completely covered with deep scars and with an expression of horror on his face. He shouted that it was not as easy as the other players thought it was. He said that every previous quest had been deadly, and the survival rate for newcomers was even lower. Showing his hand, he added that this is the price he pays for survival. Hearing this, the girls got scared and covered their mouths with their hands. Ling Yui took a step forward. He spread his arms to the sides and said in a friendly manner that he was already impressed that Big Brother survived so many quests alive. He asked the man if he had any experience he could share with them, the newbies. The guy's words surprised the man and he looked at him. He clenched his hands into fists as he stood in front of Ling Yui and thought that this young man had a better mindset than others and could survive this quest. The man folded his arms across his chest again and, turning to everyone, said that ghosts and thrillers don't kill for nothing, and as a person who has been there, he advises remembering two things. The rest of the players surrounded him and listened attentively. He raised one finger up and said seriously that the ghosts of the game only kill those who break the rules. After that, he raised two fingers up, looking at Ling Yui and the pink-haired girl, and said that the basic rules would be prompted to the players in a very direct manner. Ling Yui lowered his head thoughtfully and thought that the man's words were almost the same as what he learned yesterday, and it was very reliable. However, he understood that these might not be all the reservations, and in order to survive himself, everyone else might have to be used and sacrificed. 
The door of one of the buildings began to open. All the players looked at this in surprise, not knowing what to expect next. Only the man, who had already played a thriller, did not succumb to fear. Someone came out of the building, coughing and heading towards all the players. He was a creepy old man with gray hair and a beard, and had a receding hairline on the top of his head. He greeted the respected players and invited them to work in the Hotel of the Underworld. The creepy old man was very hunched over, he was dressed in a black uniform. He laughed strangely, after which he introduced himself as the accountant of this hotel and said that he had come to distribute tasks to all of them on the orders of the hostess. The old man began to approach the players. Ling Yui and the rest of the people looked at the accountant in fear, the guy even gritted his teeth. He realized that this old man's breath was so cold that there was no doubt that he was truly an evil spirit. The old man coughed into his hand, after which he looked at the players with his sidelong eyes. He said that before they started work, he had to tell them about a few rules at the hotel. Ling Yui tensed, but tried to keep a calm face. He realized that now they would be told about the rule of death, which should not be violated in thriller games. The accountant put one hand behind his back and pointed to the side with the other. He said that firstly, they all need to do their jobs to the best of their ability, regardless of whether they work in the front desk or the back room. He warned them that if they were slack, the mistress would not spare them. As he said this, a grimace of true horror appeared on his face, his pupils were constricted, and a drop of cold sweat ran down his cheek. Ling Yui raised his fist to his chin and realized that this accountant was also afraid of the mistress. That is, the mistress was a more powerful and harsh ghost than the accountant. Moreover, she will not attack him because he is her subordinate. The old man raised his palms in the air with the backs facing down and said that secondly, Everything in the store is in a state of disrepair, and can be easily damaged, and if they break something, they will have to pay for it. The accountant showed the number three with his fingers and announced the last rule, which prohibited disobeying clients. He said that while players would not be punished if they encountered grumpy customers, if they found an excuse to reprimand the players, the boss's wife would not defend them. Because of the accountant's slanted eyes, it was impossible to understand where he was looking. He finished talking about the rulebook and then asked if the players had any questions for him. All the newcomers looked in different directions in embarrassment and confusion. Only the experienced man shook his head from side to side, as if saying that he had no more questions. After this, the accountant said that in this case he would entrust them with the work. He pointed his finger at the seasoned man and said that he seemed strong. He ordered him to go to the back of the kitchen to chop vegetables with the cook, then explained where the kitchen was. The strong man was a little surprised, but did not show it. He walked forward silently, passing by Ling Yui and the pink-haired girl. Finally, the man turned around and looked at the guy, mentally telling him to take care of himself. As he walked into the building, the accountant coughed loudly, looking around at the other players. He looked at the guy with blonde hair and the girl in a tight dress. The old man pointed to the right and said that they would be in charge of cleaning the guests, and added that once they entered the hotel, they should turn right and find Jiang Nan to pick up the tools. Next, he approached a middle-aged man in a business suit, who tensed with fear. The old man pointed behind himself and said that this man seemed to have some knowledge, so he ordered him to go up to the second floor and wait for him in the accountant's office so that he could teach the man how to reconcile accounts. The man walked into the building, while the accountant headed towards Ling Yui. He realized that only he and the girl with pink hair were left here. He wondered what tasks he would be given. The old man silently stroked his beard for a while, after which he said that they were both dolls and with their beautiful flesh they looked magnificent. He smiled creepily and ordered them to go to the living room to work as waiters. They had to take orders and serve food, after which the old man said that they probably didn't need to be taught this. He pointed to the slightly open door of the building and indicated that the living room was just down the hall, after which he said that he hoped that they knew how to behave and did not make any mistakes. The girl was trembling with fear. She pressed her hand to her chest and silently looked at the entrance to the hotel. Ling Yui grabbed her hand sharply and then led her to the hotel. The girl was taken aback and surprised, after which Ling Yui said that they need to go faster. He stepped over the threshold of the hotel. They found themselves in a hallway where the walls were made of wood and the floor was tiled and gray. The guy let go of the girl's hand and walked forward. She thanked him shyly, looking at his back, and said that her name was Lee. Ling Yui looked straight and serious and said that he would simply call her Junior Lee, and he himself introduced himself with an incomplete name. He was thinking that the bearded player had not introduced himself, so he would also rather not say his full name. Li looked at him in surprise, then ran after him and thanked him. Ling Yui opened the door to the living room. They entered a room furnished with dining tables and benches, with kitchen utensils all around. 
The couple looked around the room, after which Li asked what they would do next. Ling Yui looked up thoughtfully. He turned to the door and headed in her direction, after which he replied that they would be waiting to meet the guests. He understood that there was no time to be afraid, and every subsequent step was a challenge of life and death. Suddenly a loud stomp was heard from the corridor. Ling Yui looked towards the door with fear on his face, and the girl, who did not understand anything, turned around and also looked in that direction. A huge green leg with stitches stepped onto the threshold of the living room. It belonged to an evil spirit who looked like a huge, fat ogre. His whole body was covered with scars and stitches, he wore an earring in his nose and ears, and was dressed in a holy brown robe. Saliva flowed from the evil spirit's mouth and he looked at Ling Yui and Lai greedily. He happily said that there really were living people here. Ling Yui panicked and looked up at the ogre, not knowing what to do. His lips curled into an uncertain smile, after which he bowed to the spirit and pointed to the empty seats in the hall, inviting the guests to enter. Li stood silently at this time, covering her mouth with her hands in fear. The ogre raised one eyebrow in surprise as he looked at Ling Yui. He walked forward, his loud stomping echoing throughout the room. He said that there were two waiters here, and if Ling Yui hadn't told him anything, he would have thought that they were serving buffet ingredients here. Ling Yui calmed down a little while the girl was still terribly scared. He thought it was good for a thriller game that had a hidden agenda. The pot-bellied evil spirit sat down at the table, and the chair under him sagged with a creak, which shocked the newly minted waiters. Ling Yui looked at the guest awkwardly and thought that he was glad that the chair didn't break, otherwise he couldn't even imagine what would have been done to them. The evil spirit, splashing his saliva in all directions, rudely ordered to first bring him a pan of hot water and a couple of plates. He held out two coins. Ling Yui smiled politely and bowed, accepting his order. He turned around and looked at the coins lying on the visitor's table. The guy realized that they were copper. She and Li went to the kitchen to fill the guest's order. A kettle was boiling on the stove. Ling Yui thought that if he was not mistaken, then these cutlery are strange. He looked at the dishes in surprise. The plates, glasses and teapots had real faces that made stupid faces. Li reached for the teapot, saying that she would help, but suddenly Ling Yui blocked her path. He took the handle of the kettle and said that it was heavy, so he would do it himself. He added that they couldn't afford to upset their guests if something went wrong. The teapot had its eyes and mouth covered, as if they were sewn up with thread. Suddenly the kitchen utensil opened its eyes and began to squeal loudly. The teapot screamed that he was very hot and begged to be killed. Water flowed from his eyes. Frightenedly looked at the teapot, not knowing what to expect next. The kettle began to scream even louder, after which it began to spit very hot boiling water from its mouth. Ling Yui raised it above his head, but drops of boiling water burned his hand, after which the guy reflexively let go of the kettle, dropping it. He looked in panic at the falling kettle and realized that he had made a terrible mistake. The talking kettle shattered on the cold tile, spilling the remaining water around it. Ling Yui and Li looked at him in confusion, not knowing what to do next. The girl looked up and looked at the guy. She suggested that he hide the broken kettle. The guy silently continued to look at the fragments. He looked to the side and realized that the girl wanted to leave everything to the mercy of fate. Ling Yui rubbed the back of his head and looked up, telling Li that it wouldn't work. Suddenly an accountant appeared behind him, stroking his beard. He coughed and said that the young man was too fussy because he had just started working and had already broken the kettle. He smiled terribly, looked at the guy with sidelong eyes and shouted that this teapot cost 50,000. Suddenly his limbs stretched out and his nails turned into long, sharp claws. The old man had a crazy expression on his face. He shouted that Ling Yui had just started working, so he couldn't afford to pay, in which case the accountant was going to take his right hand, which broke the kettle, as compensation. He pointed his long arms towards Ling Yui. Li squealed in fear, clutching her face with her hands. Ling Yui became angry and loudly ordered the old man to stop. He asked who told him he couldn't afford to pay. The guy mentally turned to the system and told it that he wanted to withdraw 50,000 ritual money and pay the old man in copper coins. Ling Yui looked straight at the threatening accountant menacingly. A system window appeared, withdrawal 50,000, balance 9,754,999,950,000. Ling Yui was enveloped in an aura that emanated a wind that almost lifted Li's skirt up. The accountant stopped in shock and silently looked at the guy. The accountant pulled his hands back and they became normal size again, and the claws disappeared. He opened his mouth in surprise and opened his eyes wide, thinking about how this person could have such pure yin energy, because it was even stronger and purer than his and the mistress's. Ling Yui had bundles of copper coins on her hand. He threw one of them towards the accountant, who began to back away. The guy said it was a thousand wen and asked if that was enough compensation. 
the coins fell with a clink at the feet of the shocked old man, who did not understand how this was possible. He carefully walked over to the bundle of coins and looked at it. He understood that a thousand wen would be enough to buy his ghostly life. He was afraid that if Ling Yui promised a thousand wen for the client to get rid of him, then he would gladly do it. There was hopelessness and fear in his gaze. He lowered his head and thought that even the hostess could be forced to do this. The old man looked at the remaining bundles of coins in Ling Yui's hands and realized that the money he had just withdrawn was five guan, and that this young man was definitely not a newbie. One guan was equal to one thousand wen. Li looked at Ling Yui in amazement and thought that he really shocked this ghost. The guy had a rather arrogant face, because he understood that even a ghost would idolize him at the sight of the divine system. He handed him another bunch of coins, then looked at the old man's face. It looked pitiful and confused. Ling Yui mentally grinned, because only 50,000 can scare him like that, and he has another 9 trillion on his balance sheet. He smiled smugly, realizing that he had a great advantage, and thinking that his golden fingers were even stronger than he thought. Ling Yui looked at the confused old man for some time, after which he went down and picked up a bunch of coins from the floor. He handed it to the ghost accountant again before placing it directly into his hands. He told him to take it while they give it, and asked if he wasn't the best at handling money. The old man looked in amazement at all these coins, because he had never seen so much money. He said in a trembling voice that Ling Yui gave him so much money. The guy smiled and nonchalantly said that he could keep them. He knew he still had a mission. Several system windows appeared in front of him. Task 1, first expenses, not completed. Contents of the task, total expenditure is more than 100,000 yuan, 10,000 out of 100,000 have been spent. Mission reward, cashback card, soul cleansing wine of hell in the amount of 10. Hint, the system has determined that the cost of a teapot of yin energy is 100 ritual money. The system's bonus calculation is limited to 100 times, and anything exceeding this does not count towards mission calculations on spending for a cashback card. Ling Yui smiled slyly and raised his hand to his chin. He understood that this was a lot of money that needed to be spent. For him, the cashback card was not as interesting as the soul-cleansing wine of hell, and perhaps it had something to do with the so-called control of ghosts and becoming their master. Ling Yui thought that if he has money, then everything is available to him, but it is possible that at some point the rules will be blurred, and to be safe in this world, in the end you need to rely on your own strength. The rules of this quest were now clear to the guy but he must complete the system's tasks as soon as possible. Ling Yui continued to look at the pitiful old man, and Li stood modestly nearby. The guy walked up to the counter with dishes and lifted up a black plate, which had a tense face. He asked how much this plate cost. The accountant raised his index finger and said with a smile that it costs 100 wen. Ling Yui let out a playful groan and threw several of these plates off the table at once, causing grimaces of fear and horror to appear on their faces. They smashed to pieces on the tiled floor, and one of the plates even had an eyeball pop out. The guy's face remained calm, but Li, on the contrary, became very alarmed and panicked. The accountant looked at all the fragments from the plates and opened his mouth in surprise. Ling Yui approached him and handed him a few more bundles of coins and asked him to accept them as compensation, after which he said that he was here for the first time and wanted to make friends with everyone in the Inn of the Underworld. The accountant extended his hands forward and accepted the money. He looked at the smiling guy and thought that whatever this young man's personality and goal was, this was a great opportunity. The old man bowed gratefully to the guy, smiled at him and said that he would not dare to become his friend, but if he had any difficulties in the future, he would be by his side. Ling Yui smiled at him and said that he could save the money for now. Li looked at it all silently, fiddling with her skirt with her hands. The guy looked again at the next plates, which were already terribly alarmed. He was preparing to break them again in order to pay compensation and spend the money, but a mysterious female voice interrupted him, forcing him to stop. The voice asked the guy to stop and follow the rules, because if he continues to break things, their business will go bankrupt. The accountant with a jingling bunch of coins in his hands turned around and said that it was the owner's voice. Ling Yui took a couple of plates and smiled, looking to the side. He noticed that the voice did not at all sound like an evil ghost, it was rather soft in tone. It seemed to him that the hostess did not remain indifferent to so much money. The guy turned around and looked at the boiling ceramic kettle. He was sorry that now it would not be possible to lure money out in this way. Ling Yui took the teapot in his hands and walked towards the green ogre and apologized to him for keeping him waiting. He placed plates and a kettle of boiling water on the table, thinking that if he was not happy with it, he would pay for it. 
but suddenly the ogre smiled and politely said that everything was fine and he was in no hurry, waving his hand. This behavior caused a surprised reaction from both Ling Yui and Li and the accountant. Their eyebrows rose in shock and their mouths dropped open. The ogre sat awkwardly in his seat and sweated. He was thinking that aside from the guy's wealth, this young man's ability to find things in the void is something that even he doesn't possess. The evil spirit was afraid that a great person was behind this and would cause him a lot of trouble in the future, and he could not be offended by such a person. Ling Yui could hardly contain his laughter at what he saw. He came closer to the visitor and said that it was his fault anyway that he had delayed him so long. The evil spirit smiled at him, after which the guy offered to pay him for today's lunch. The ogre closed his eyes and smiled sincerely, a little embarrassed. He thanked the guy. Ling Yui pointed to the wooden signs with the names of the dishes and said that everything was in order, and the visitor need not be modest around him. He invited him to order everything on the menu. Inwardly, he regretted that the most expensive product, Yin Quan Tonic Soup, costs only 100 yuan, noting that for beginners the costs are completely trivial. The evil spirit embarrassedly pointed at the menu and asked in a trembling voice if he could take one dish from each menu item. These words made Ling Yui happy and he mentally praised the ghost while still pointing at the menu. The accountant asked if he wanted one dish from each menu, after which he noted that this would not be enough. After that, he shouted to Ling Yui that he would help inform him in the kitchen back room. Ling Yui was standing at the visitor's table at this time, leaning his hands on it. He smiled creepily and said that they would order it that way then. The evil spirit looked at him and awkwardly said that he was reckless. Ling Yui shouted that it was time to work, after which he showed the number two with his fingers and ordered two servings of each dish over thirty wen. The accountant began to count the sum of all the dishes in his notebook, writing everything down there. He said that the total is 830 wen and they can add another zero at the end. The ogre was already drooling from the anticipation of a free and filling lunch. Ling Yui said that it would be 1000 wen, which shocked the others so much that they didn't even answer him. The guy leaned against the cabinet with pots and thought. As of now, he had only spent 60,000 yuan, which was still not enough for him. Lai stood next to him. She tried to timidly address him, putting her hands behind her back. Ling Yui turned away from his thoughts and looked at her. Suddenly an idea appeared in his head, and his face immediately changed. He was full of enthusiasm. The guy grabbed her by the shoulders and said that she came to him just in time, because he had a request for her. Lee didn't expect this, so she was stunned. A few minutes later the girl was already standing on the street with a sign. The sky was bright orange and the weather was very good. She dragged the sign back into the living room, which was full of evil spirits and ghosts. They all feasted joyfully. An evil spirit of purple color with one eye was counting something out loud, and a multi-armed ghost with the face of a bird thanked the respected Mr. Ling Yui for such a generous offer. At one of the tables sat an interesting evil spirit. He was gray in color, but he was completely missing his head, but his face was on his stomach and chest. He happily raised his fists in the air and shouted that normally he wouldn't dare to consume blood food essence like this. But thanks to young master Ling Yui, his yin energy could increase a few more points and he wouldn't have to work much hard. The purple-colored evil spirit with a horn on his forehead noted that the coins that Ling Yui used were not only imbued with yin energy, but were also completely new, and this could not be obtained from ordinary people. He assumed that Ling Yui was the chosen one of the Ghost King and he had come to make a name for himself by throwing away money. At this time, Li walked by, holding a sign, and overheard their conversation. After that, she walked past another table, where a ghost woman with a long face was sitting. She wondered if this Mr. Ling Yui had ever been married, to which her friend asked if she wanted to marry him. This whole atmosphere made Lai tense. At this time, Ling Yui and the first visitor were sitting with the second ghost and drinking together, which made the girl feel embarrassed. She decided that Ling Yui was not a newbie at all. The guy noticed a girl passing by and got up from the table. He waved to her and thanked her for her good work, after which he asked the accountant to bring another Yin Quan tonic soup to treat the girl with it. The guy ran up to the front desk with a bunch of coins and shouted that he had left the money there. As soon as the coins touched the table, a system window appeared, which indicated that the total cost of the task exceeded 10,000. The system congratulated the owner on the successful completion of task number one, called the 10th consumption. As a reward, he was given a cashback card and soul-cleansing wine of hell in the amount of 10. Ling Yui happily clenched his fists and rejoiced at the completed task of the system. A new system window began to appear in front of him. An inventory appeared in his system. So far, the only thing in the inventory was the soul-cleansing wine of hell. A system window has appeared, hell's soul-cleansing wine, 
When consumed, it increases the strength and spiritual consciousness of ghosts and also increases the level. You can drink no more than three bottles, further use will be useless. This was exactly what Ling Yue needed most, as he believed that he could only truly control his destiny when he was strong. A small vessel of wine began to appear in his palm. He was surrounded by a green aura. The guy looked at the wine with a serious face and thought that he would not waste time and use it right now to become a ghost lord. From the vessel with wine, an aroma spread throughout the room, which attracted ghosts. They all inhaled this sweet smell and savored it. They noticed the vessel in Ling Yui's hand, made of malachite. The two horned ghost asked in amazement what this was and was amazed at this pure and rich yin energy. The red ghost said in shock that Mr. Ling Yui's estates are truly incomprehensible. The guy himself grinned contentedly and furrowed his eyebrows. He took a confident step forward, then raised the wine up, shouting that he was drinking it for them all. The visitors immediately began to cheer and raise their fists in the air. The little egg-shaped ghost exclaimed joyfully. Ling Yui emptied the small vessel at once. His body was covered in a red aura and he smiled smugly. He noted that this aura was very pure and cold and asked if it was Yin Kai. Several system windows appeared. The first use of the wine of hell, plus 10 to spiritual consciousness and plus 100 to spiritual strength. The host gains spiritual consciousness for the first time and opens the attribute panel. Lang Yui carefully read everything that was said in the system windows. He folded his arms across his chest. He learned that his current level was a level 1 ghost lord, his spiritual consciousness was 10, and his spiritual power was 100. He needed 50 points of spiritual consciousness and some spiritual power points to become a level 2 ghost lord. The guy was thinking about how he received so many good system rewards for drinking the wine of hell. He continued to look straight, eyebrows lowered. Several new system windows have appeared. A new task is available. Task 2, Spender Unfinished. Quest Content. Spend more than 320,000 yuan in one transaction. Spent 0 and 30,000. Quest Reward. Contract for the Master of the Ghost of a Perfect Ghost in the amount of 5. Ling Yui thoughtfully raised his hand to his chin and realized that with this contract, his strength would be on a different level, and he must find a way to complete the task. The guy was distracted from his thoughts, again hearing rejoicing from the audience. The ghost drank and rejoiced. The guy's face was calm and emotionless. The ghost ogre who was his first visitor looked at Ling Yui intensely and thought that his aura was not that strong, but he was so generous and carried spiritual wine with him. He was afraid that his true essence was a great power with a wounded soul, after which he decided to return the debt to the guy without trying to appease him. He got up from the table. The ogre stood up and addressed Ling Yui, saying that he would be generous and call him his brother. At this time, the entire hall fell silent, and Ling Yui, who was standing on a chair, turned his attention to him. The ghost said that he was very ashamed that Ling Yui treated him today, so he wanted to give the yin tool to his brother Ling Yui. He held out what looked like a malachite mirror with beautiful patterns and a handle that resembled a skeleton's hand. The ogre said that he had this mirror for many years, but he never knew its true use, except that when it is filled with yin energy, it can show him various ghostly creatures and gathering points of yin energy in the surrounding area. Ling Yui accepted the gift and exclaimed in surprise. He began to examine it. The guy didn't understand what kind of strange yin instrument this was, this mirror didn't show anything. A system window has appeared, a yin tool has been discovered, the mirror of Kui Lan's soul imprisonment is tied to its owner. Ling Yui raised his head in surprise and read the new information. The ogre blushed embarrassedly and scratched the back of his head. He said that its true effects were not that simple, so leaving it in his hands would be a waste, and it could only be useful to Ling Yui. The guy looked at him from under his brows and said that this mirror was a really good thing and would be useful to him. He waved at them a little. The ogre was amazed. He did not expect Ling Yui to know his true essence. Li stood in shock at what she saw. A black hole appeared in the air where Ling Yui put his gift away. The ghost grabbed his face in surprise, shocked by the spatial treasure. The ogre sweated from tension and thought that the origin of this man was not simple and he must have been in deeper places. His pupils shrank as he realized, as he thought, where Ling Yui had come from. He believed that the other ghosts should flatter him, please him and kneel before him. This is exactly what all the other ghosts in the establishment were doing. One of the ghosts, looking like an old sage, said that he also had a treasure for the young man. Ling Yui said that he didn't need to be so polite and asked what he had. He walked over to his desk, thinking that he had originally just wanted to complete the quest, but had expected such consequences. The ghost handed him a necklace of many small skulls on a red thread. He said it was the enmity skull necklace that he bought from the ghost market. 
it can be worn to protect the soul from the onslaught of yin energy at the level of a ghost general, and it can also store the injected yin energy and release it as a counterattack when necessary. He added that a guy might not need this feature, but it's great as decoration. Ling Yui accepted the gift and took it in his hands. A system window appears, the necklace is tied to its owner. The skulls were surrounded by a purple aura. Ling Yui realized that it was not as advanced as that mirror, but this practical offensive and defensive treasure suited him best at this stage. The other ghosts in the establishment said that they had nothing to offer such gifts, so they presented him with some of the original yin energy to store in his necklace. The evil spirits opened their mouths and violet energy began to flow from there, which immediately entered the skulls on the necklace. The guy put it on his neck and felt that he had become much stronger. A purple aura emanated from the skulls. Ling Yui clasped his hands together and thanked everyone present who had given him gifts. All the ghosts smiled good-naturedly at him, as if they themselves were glad to give him so many offerings. They said there was nothing to thank them for. While Ling Yui was surrounded by his new fans, Li awkwardly watched him and said that it was even more flattering than her father's subordinates sending him pictures. She couldn't believe it was actually a thriller game. On the street, a yellow leaf spun in the air and fell to the ground. There was a sign on the door of the establishment stating that they were closed. The accountant, Ling Yui and Li were all sitting together at the table by candlelight. The accountant happily said that thanks to Mr. Ling Yui, today's turnover has increased more than five times compared to previous days. Ling Yui looked outside and saw a dark sky with fog. He thought that it was not surprising that the ghosts had to quickly leave before nightfall. After this ascending and descending yin, he was afraid that it was no longer safe for these ghosts outside. The hostess's voice announced that the day's shift was over for the day, so everyone should gather in the hall and get ready for dinner. Everyone present in the establishment raised their heads in surprise and looked away from their thoughts. Ling Yui realized that it was time to meet the other ghosts in the inn and they might not be as kind to his money as the accountant. He made a serious face. Li said worriedly that she was wondering how the others were doing. Suddenly, bloody spots appeared in the air above them and began to form words again. What they saw made Ling Yui tense and Li very scared. The bloody words said that the number of current survivors was four. The girl turned pale and covered her face with her hand. She said in shock that it was only the first day, and they already had two dead. The guy, looking at the bloody number four, said that this quest has low survival rate. He sat down at the table. The guy thought that even though he relied on the ritual money to provide him with security for the time being, he would have lost at least part of his hand if he had moved a little slower when taking out the money. He looked down at his right hand, covering his face with his fist. Ling Yui looked at the pot of bowls and thought that those friendly ghost guests would have tried to make it their dinner if he had not bought them food and drink. However, the guy was glad that in addition to money he had capital, and he would definitely be able to save his life. He touched the necklace of skulls on his neck and it hissed. An accountant approached Ling Yui and Li and began wiping the table with a smile. He said that a little later they would have dinner here together, because this is a tradition in the inn of the afterlife. Suddenly someone asked him, calling him Louis, why he was so respectful of the new waiter. This voice behind the old man made him taken aback. He turned around and saw a very fat ghost woman who had a huge scar and a bunch of warts on her face. In her hand she had a broom, with which she urged the girl with purple hair. She looked exhausted. Her whole body and face were covered with scars. Lee exclaimed with horror on her face that she couldn't believe that this attractive girl had turned into something scary. Ling Yui didn't show any sign of looking at them, but Lee added that the blonde guy who was in the group with her didn't come. The girl with purple hair asked in surprise that they didn't do anything. Ling Yui and Lee looked at her silently. The exhausted girl rubbed her chin with her fist. She was very angry, and the scars on her face were very disfiguring. She sat down at a table in the corner and began to tremble. Ling Yui looked at her and thought that if he didn't have spiritual consciousness, he wouldn't be able to recognize the jealousy in this woman's heart. The guy looked straight ahead thoughtfully, scratching his chin, and realized that with her abilities, she shouldn't be able to harm him. The grumpy and scary ghost woman was named Jang Nan. She looked menacingly at Louie, who was afraid of her. Ling Yui looked at them and noted that not everything was so harmonious in the inn of the underworld either. The old man threw a rag into a bucket of water and called Jang Nan a short-sighted woman, saying that she enjoyed tormenting her assistants, and he needed to accumulate a lot of good deeds. Jang Nan turned to Ling Yui and, pointing her finger at him and calling him a little waiter, asked why don't he go and clear the table, after which she rudely asked if he was neglecting his work. The woman swung her broom, surrounding herself with a green aura. She shouted with an angry face that since old ghost Liu was weak, she would punish him on behalf of the old man and let him know about the rules of the afterlife in. 
The purple-haired woman seemed to be waiting for this and was ready to enjoy his punishment, smiling exhaustedly. Lee screamed and grabbed her face with her hands. The guy picked up a small bowl from the table and drank from it. At this time, there was a defensive purple spiritual field around him, which was able to protect him from the attack of the grumpy and dissatisfied Jang Nan. The protective field was caused by the skulls on the necklace. Lang Yui grinned contentedly. Jiang Nan looked at him in surprise, as if she couldn't believe what she saw. She jumped back a meter in shock. Lang Yui, holding the bowl in his hand, smiled contentedly and thought that this was ridiculous, because her strength should not even reach the level of a ghost general. Jiang Nan rubbed her chin and looked at the guy angrily. She saw the necklace and then said that he was relying on a middle-class yin weapon. She sat down at the table unhappily. The chair under her sagged and almost broke. Liu, Li and Ling Yui silently looked at the vile woman. Jiang Nan looked at the guy disapprovingly. On the right side of her face there was a huge cut through which a piece of flesh could be seen. The entire scar was covered with stitches. Her cold gaze made Ling Yui tense. A bead of sweat ran down his face from excitement. He understood that this woman obviously harbored a grudge against him. He thought that if she got the chance, she would definitely kill him. Today's safety was due to the fact that the ghosts were afraid of Ling Yui, because they did not know his identity. But the guy realized that if he couldn't get rid of Zhang Nan, then the old ghost or even the mistress would see that his strength was just a deception, and then he would definitely be in trouble. They continued to sit silently at the table all together for some time. Zhang Nan continued to stare at the guy coldly, which made everyone else feel uncomfortable at the table. Ling Yui calmed down and furrowed his brows, making a serious face. He believed that he must find a way to get rid of her as soon as possible. Suddenly someone came into the room. Even old man Liu and Zhang Nan tensed and looked at the newcomer in fear. Li and Ling Yui's faces also changed. They panicked, not knowing what to expect next. The man who entered was a muscular and tall ghost with gray hair and a large scar on his chest. He had a shoulder pad in the shape of a skull. Zhang Nan who had been threatening Ling Yui a few minutes ago, immediately became quiet and silent. He and the old man looked down and tried not to look at the evil spirit that had entered. The ghosts were silent and did not want to anger the formidable evil spirit. Ling Yui tried not to look into the eyes of the newcomer. He was tense. The guy guessed that this ghost was a chef, and judging by the sense of spiritual awareness, he must be a more powerful being than Jiang Nan. Together with the cook, a strong man entered the room, who found himself in a thriller game along with the others. The cook ordered him to put the pot of food on the table in a rude tone. The man could not disobey and carried a large black saucepan. He placed it on the table with a downcast and depressed look. His right sleeve of his sweatshirt hung loosely, as if he didn't have a hand there. Ling Yui noticed this and was shocked to realize that he had lost her. The cook reached for the lid of the pan with the dish. He joyfully shouted that dinner was ready, thereby inviting the others to the table. The girl with purple hair joined the dinner. There was hot soup with purple broth in the pan, but besides it there were bones, eyeballs, a human hand and glasses floating there. Lee picked up the eyeball with chopsticks and looked at it fearfully, as if forcing herself to eat it. The purple-haired girl pulled a black eyeglass frame out of the soup along with a couple of locks of dark-colored hair. She looked at them with an alarmed face and could not believe what she saw. The menacing cook approached her from behind with his arms crossed over his chest and angrily asked if she didn't like his cooking. She was very frightened and answered in a trembling voice that she would not dare to say a bad word to him and she liked everything. After that, the cook with a happy face ordered her to eat the dish. Ling Yui stood up from his seat and invited the strong man to sit at the table with them. At this time, the cook was heading to the cupboard with dishes. He opened a can of wine, and the smell of it made the living bowl wince its face. Ling Yui crossed his arms over his chest with a serious face and looked towards the cook. He knew that if he doubted this guy's culinary skills and didn't eat the dish he prepared, it would make him want to kill. Meanwhile, the cook was already pouring blue wine into his bowl. The living dishes shed a tear with the words that this wine is very sour and astringent. The man took a large sip of alcohol, telling the vessel to shut up. He continued to greedily drink the wine while Ling Yui looked at him with a sly smile, as if rejoicing at something. As soon as the cook finished with the wine, he exhaled loudly, placing the bowl on the table with a crash. He turned his attention to Ling Yui and looked at him questioningly. He pointed his finger at the guy and asked in a loud voice why he wasn't eating. His scream sent a shiver through the bodies of everyone present, but Ling Yui remained unperturbed. The man looked at Ling Yui's cheeky grin and his plate with chopsticks on it, and then assumed that the guy didn't like his cooking. 
He picked up the bowl again and approached the guy, asking if he liked his cooking skills. Ling Yui stood up from the table with a smile on his face. He snatched the bowl from the cook's hands and good-naturedly said that this was a very tasteless drink and asked if it was difficult for him to drink it. This made the cook taken aback. Ling Yui, with a straight face, poured the entire contents of the bowl directly onto the floor. Everyone sitting at the table was shocked by his actions and froze in fear. The cook, looking at the guy, thought that he was simply suicidal for allowing himself to do this. Zhang Nan thought that this would be useful for her. She looked at Ling Yui with an evil grin and mentally wished him death and thanked him. Because now she didn't have to do everything herself. And, as she thought, even his necklace could not stop this thug. Lee realized with an alarmed face that everything was completely wrong. Because judging by the way this cook looked before, he really didn't like the drink he was drinking. She assumed that Ling Yui wanted to appease him somehow. The cook looked at the guy with an ominous smile. His hands were already shaking from tension because he wanted to kill him right on the spot. He asked if the guy was provoking him. But after a second the thug smelled something and stopped being so angry. It was the smell of soul cleansing in wine, the vessel with which Ling Yui took out. The cook immediately calmed down. Ling Yui took out the cork from the wine, after which it began to exude an even stronger sweet smell. The guy very politely and flatteringly asked the cook, addressing him as his excellency, how he could think about Ling Yui, that he took it into his head to provoke him. He continued to say that his cooking skills are worthy of all praise, but his tasting skills are much better, and that is why Ling Yui can't bear to see him drink such rough and cloudy wine. He placed the bowl on the table and began pouring his wine into it, inviting the cook to try it. Everyone silently watched his actions. From such good wine, even the living bowl felt bliss, smiling and rolling its eyes with pleasure. The cook was incredulous and thought that if this was just another attempt by the arrogant guy to anger him, then he would definitely kill him. But at the same time he realized that Ling Yui was right about something, because this wine is really better than that what he always takes from the tavern. The thug sat down at the table and picked up a bowl of wine, agreeing to try it. Ling Yui chuckled with a smile on his face. The cook began to pour wine into himself, but after a second his eyes widened in surprise. This wine seemed to transport him to the blissful hot springs, where he was surrounded by beautiful women. His face immediately changed with pleasure. He closed his eyes and smiled, praising the wine. He took another sip of wine, thinking about how pure the yin kai was coming from him. It washed over his soul, and he had the feeling that only through this wine could he elevate the kingdom. The thug put the bowl on the table and said that this was good wine. Ling Yui quietly looked towards the man and smiled. He easily bribed him with his soul cleansing in wine. The guy called the cook brother and invited him to drink another cup, pouring him wine. Sweet drops filled the dishes again, which seemed to glow with happiness. The man picked up a cup of wine and exhaled. He took a careful sip of the wine, then emptied the cup completely in small sips. His cheeks turned deep red. He threw his head up with pleasure and said that the wine was simply amazing. Ling Yui looked at him and smiled. He realized that when the thug saw that the bottle of wine was empty, he stopped drinking it in one gulp, after which he simply lifted the cup and began to sip the wine, sip after sip. As he suspected, the soul-cleansing wine was more effective than he could have imagined. He moved his right hand behind his back and turned to the system. She took out another vessel of wine from her inventory and placed it directly on the guy's hand. He sang something under his breath and then showed the bottle of wine to the cook. The thug asked if he still had such wine. Ling Yui smiled and handed over the bottle, asking if he could fill another cup for his dear friend. The cook thanked him and called him brother. Ling Yui began filling the man's cup with a smile on his face. Everyone present could not believe their eyes and were even taken aback. Cold sweat began to run down Zhang Nan's and old man Louis's faces, and they were in a stupor. They couldn't believe that the cook actually called this young man brother. Zhang Nan's face immediately changed, making a menacing expression on her face. She believed that he was just a worthless person and could not be compared to a spirit. In her opinion, he would have to die in this place. Ling Yui sighed sadly and said that he was very sorry. This phrase confused the cook. With a perplexed face, he asked what kind of pity it was, because he had already told the guy that he had very good wine. Ling Yui put a bottle of wine on the table and told him that his pity was that the chef could not fully enjoy the aroma of this soul-cleansing wine of hell, after which he began to provoke him, saying that the snacks would be here perfect. The man immediately calmed down and said that Ling Yui is right, but he forgets that he is actually a cook. The brute took out his huge sword and said that throughout his life he had honed his culinary skills to perfection, and would now cook something in order to immediately get rid of Ling Yui's pity. The guy sighed sadly and began to turn his head. 
He said that he knew very well about the ideal culinary skills of the cook, but he forgot to take into account that the local ingredients were of poor quality, and no matter how hard he tried, he would not be able to fully embody his culinary ideal. He slyly looked at Jang Nan and added that there is so much ghostly Kai here, which is why their food is so spoiled. The woman was taken aback by such impudence. Ling Yui asked in a calm, measured voice if it was disgusting to cook with ghosts, smiling slyly. These words made the cook think, and he repeated several times with his head down about cooking with ghosts, as if trying to come to some kind of conclusion. After a couple of seconds, he immediately began to smile and placed his hand on Ling Yui's shoulder. He shouted that he finally understood what the matter was and told the guy that he regretted not having met him earlier. He looked menacingly in the other direction. Zhang Nan immediately turned pale and began to tremble with fear, as did the old man next to her. The woman stood up from the table and grabbed her broom. She was taken aback and asked what the cook was up to, since she didn't even insult him. Zhang Nan shouted that everyone who works in the Underworld Hotel should not break the rules. Ling Yui looked at her and stopped smiling. He thought that for the native ghosts in this game, killing their own kind was not prohibited by the rules. Old man Louis began stroking his beard and, with a crazy expression on his face, mockingly asked if she really hadn't insulted him and if she wasn't breaking the rules, after which he reproached her for talking nonsense, because she herself had attacked her little brother shortly before all this cooks. Ling Yui continued to look at them with a cold gaze. Old man Louis began to swear at Zhang Nan even more, shouting that nothing had happened but she herself had exceeded her authority in order to harm the employee who was under his command, and thus it was she who first violated the sacred rules of the hotel. The woman did not expect such attacks and asked him who he wanted to take revenge for. She immediately became enraged and a green aura surrounded her as she swung her broom at the old man. Suddenly, a sharp, large sword surrounded by a red aura flew towards her. It stabbed Jang Nan straight in the chest, throwing her against the wall of the room. It was the cook who attacked her. The woman found herself nailed to a wooden wall with a sword. She began to squeal in pain and tried to pull out the sword herself. She called the chef's name Zhu Jiang and asked how he could do this even if the owner asked him to take over. He looked at her menacingly and came closer. Zhu Jiang told her that the Underworld Hotel had a rule that no unreasonable actions against staff were allowed during dinner, accusing her of being the first to break the rules. He grabbed the hilt of his sword protruding from the woman's chest and said that this old man is an excellent worker who works hard and treats people kindly. So Zhang Nan is indeed guilty of an additional violation. In fear, she began to beg for mercy, screaming and twitching. However, Zhu Jiang did not listen to her and pulled out his sword from her chest while she was shedding tears. After that, Zhang Nan fell to her knees right in front of Zhu Jiang, and then fell onto her chest unconscious. He picked up her lifeless body and carried her somewhere. Ling Yui looked at them a little anxiously, not expecting that his friend would immediately kill her in a few seconds. Zhu Jiang turned to Ling Yui as he walked outside and said that he would take care of the ingredients and let the guy save the wine for him. Ling Yui nodded and smiled at him. He realized that this chef was much stronger than expected, and today they would not have to worry about Jiang Nan's attack at night. However, he turned his gaze to old man Louis, realizing that he also intended to use Jiang Nan to test him. The old man sitting at the table tensed from his cold gaze, shuddering. He looked at Ling Yui fearfully, without saying anything to him. A trembling ran through the spirit's body again. The guy took out a jar of wine, thanking Louis for his concern today, and asked if he would mind if they raised a toast to him. Ling Yui looked at him slyly, thinking that he would now punish him as an example to others. The old man continues to tremble with fear. He couldn't believe that this young man was not only rich, but also forced Zhu Jiang to kill Zhang Nan with just a few words. And from the look of the guy, he later wants to tell General Zhu Jiang that the old man drank all the wine. His eyes again began to squint in different directions, because he understood that if he drinks it now, he will be a corpse. But Ling Yui can tell him that making a toast without drinking is impolite after which he will force him to drink. He tried to come up with at least some way out of this situation. Louis came up with an idea that seemed ideal to him. He decided to offer Ling Yui the treasure. He looked at the necklace of skulls on Ling Yui's neck, which hissed angrily, and he decided that he would act like the ghosts this afternoon. Ling Yui makes a toast, and they make a return gesture in the form of gifts, and despite the fact that he is rich, the guy is not at all opposed to gifts from others. In any case, no one in the hotel needs the item that Louis was going to give. He began to look for something in his pockets, rummaging through them. Ling Yui looked at him questioningly. The old man with a good-natured smile presented him with a green cube, saying that he had found an object from his early years. The guy grinned contentedly, realizing that the old man was really scared of him. 
Louis began to sweat with excitement. The old man, showing the cube, said that this item is called petrified wood and is a good material for making weapons. This superior quality piece has been preserved for thousands of years and costs slightly less than a high quality yin weapon. As soon as Ling Yui accepted the gift, a system window appeared above his head, superior quality yin material detected. He looked at the window and was convinced that the material was really good. He decided that he would now complete the system's quest at the same time. The old man continued to stand with his arms outstretched. Ling Yui began throwing petrified wood in the air and told the old man that he had given him a good thing, asking its price. Louis immediately began to make excuses, saying that he could not ask for money for what was given to Ling Yui, and asked him to just take the gift. The guy made a gloomy expression on his face and came close to Louis, asking why he couldn't take the money, because he was a principled person and couldn't just take such a valuable thing from him. These words made the old man taken aback. He began to squint his eyes again in thought. He guessed that this was Ling Yui's rule for surviving in this world. After all, in their world, in order to survive, you need your own rules. He introduced his colleagues and their duties against the backdrop of the starry sky. Xu Jiang's responsibilities, chop wood, drink alcohol, season, cut and wash vegetables, eat dishes. Zhang Nan's responsibilities, cleaning the corridor, keeping the beds in order, washing and drying. Louis's responsibilities included calculations, compensation, debit, credit, silver liang, and salaries. But he didn't know what Ling Yui's duties were. For everyone, questions about this are taboo, they are not discussed, and if you ask directly, you can offend a person. Louis asked in a trembling voice what the price of Ling Yui was. He looked at him warily, trying not to offend him. Ling Yui summoned several bundles of coins while surrounded by a golden aura and replied that his price was three guan. He hung all three bundles of coins around the old man's neck. He was beside himself with happiness and even cried, looking at the money. He jumped up joyfully and smiled, saying that this was not just an offer of a plea for mercy, this was a chance for him. Louis looked at the guy who stood nobly with his left hand raised in the air. The old man realized that with these three guan coins, his sales contract with the landlady could be cancelled ten years earlier. Louis fell to his knees in front of Ling Yui. He bowed at his feet, saying that he was very grateful to him for his generosity. He began to bow to Ling Yui several times in a row, hitting his head on the floor. The other players did not expect such a gesture from the evil spirit. Li thought with astonishment that Ling Yui was incomparable. The purple-haired girl covered her mouth in surprise, and the strong guy couldn't believe that this newcomer could make a strong ghost bow down. It was as if it suddenly dawned on him. His pupils constricted and his eyes widened as he thought that he might be one of those legendary people who came from a family of exorcists. The strong guy looked at the proud guy surrounded by a red aura. Several system windows appeared. You have spent more than 30,000 yuan in one transaction. Congratulations to the owner for successfully completing the second task. Reward, Ultimate Level Ghost Master Contract The old man hugged Ling Yui's legs with tears in his eyes, saying that he had given him generosity at the cost of his life. At this time, the guy carefully read the new information and thought that if he understood everything correctly, then with the contract of the Ghost Lord he would be able to force the spirits to fight for him. A system window has appeared. Perfect level Ghost Lord contract can be used regardless of rank. The ghosts with whom you enter into a contract cannot betray you, because they have absolute loyalty and obedience, and also serve for life. Ling Yui was happy about this, because a perfect level contract is really something, and such a seamless effect cannot be achieved by other ordinary contracts. He looked sullenly and silently at the old man who hugged his legs and thanked him for his kindness. Ling Yui understood that something as good as a contract could not be wasted on this old man. The guy believed that there must be some other way out. He roughly kicked the old man aside. At this time, Zhu Jiang came into the room with a pot of soup. He turned to Ling Yui and said that he had finished preparing the ghost dish. In addition to the soup, the cook prepared a magnificent cut of meat and placed it on the table. He said that this was his first time cooking this and suggested that Ling Yui try it. He pointed to the plate of appetizer. Ling Yui sat at the table with his mouth open in surprise. Everyone else was also shocked. The guy picked up the meat with chopsticks and began to inspect it. He thought that this cook was really good at what he did, because this food contained yin energy, which was an excellent tonic for both ghosts and ghost hunters. A piece of meat was soon in his mouth. A system window has appeared. The soul of a strong ghost has been absorbed. 
plus one point to spiritual power. Ling Yui was very surprised by this. A new system window has appeared. Current level, level one ghost lord. Spiritual awareness, 10 out of 50. Spiritual power, 101 out of 500. Ling Yui was happy about this because he didn't expect that she could actually increase spiritual power. He smiled, gave Zhu Jiang a thumbs up and said that it was very tasty, clean and hygienic. The cook didn't think that the guy would like the dish so much. He laughed and raised the cup of wine, saying that he was glad of it. They clinked cups of wine and made a toast. Zhu Jiang began to drink wine, and Ling Yui continued to eat the meat tenderloin. The others did not participate in the meal and silently watched them. With each piece eaten, spiritual power increased by one point, so the guy didn't even think about stopping. There were dark clouds outside the window and a strong wind was blowing. Meanwhile, Ling Yui and Zhu Zhang finished their meal, leaving only empty plates behind. The guy exhaled heavily, his cheeks even turned red. Just by eating food, his spiritual power reached 197 points. Zhu Zhang lay on the table and again praised the wine, holding out the empty cup forward. Ling Yui looked at him with a smile, because the cook was originally the biggest threat to the quest. But Ling Yui didn't even think that the soul-purifying hell wine would benefit him so much. The hostess's voice was heard from somewhere above, announcing that meal time was over. Everyone was distracted from their thoughts and began to listen to her. The hostess's voice ordered old man Louis to take the players to rest. He bowed humbly and said that he understood everything. Zhu Jiang sadly folded his arms and closed his eyes, telling Ling Yui that he was sorry that the meal was over for today. The guy looked at him in surprise, after which he said goodbye and said that they would see each other tomorrow, waving goodbye. Zhu Jiang waved back and headed out. Ling Yui realized that the cook was not as kind to the hostess as the old man. Louis ordered everyone to clear the dishes from the table. A strong guy and a girl with purple hair began to clean up. Ling Yui looked at them and also decided to help clean up. Suddenly the hostess's voice disrupted his plans. She asked him to go up to the third floor to see her. The corners of the guy's lips drooped, he tensed, not knowing what to expect. He looked towards the stairs, thinking that the hostess was individually conveying a message to him. He began to climb up the steps. He was a little confused while walking up the stairs, because in order to escape in this game, he had to use a lot of money, so he attracted the attention of the mistress. He assumed she was the final boss of this quest and didn't know if it was a blessing or a curse that she wanted to see him in person now. Ling Yui went up to the third floor and stood in front of the red pattern doors, with a floor lamp standing next to them. Apparently, the owner is here. He carefully opened the red doors and then stepped inside. The hostess was waiting for him there, sitting on a sofa with a translucent red canopy. A scarlet aura hovered around her. She was very beautiful. She was wearing an expensive dress with fur and patterns. Her long hair was neatly tied up with a hairpin and she was holding a green fan in her hands. Her eyes and lips were highlighted with red makeup. Ling Yui panicked a little, although he didn't show it, because he was standing in front of the owner of the Inn of the Underworld. He sighed heavily, trying not to get nervous. The guy walked towards her, thinking that according to the rules of murder, she could not kill him right away, and he would have to improvise. Ling Yui clasped his hands together as a sign of respect and asked if she had any business with him, because he didn't even know why she was looking for him. With an embarrassed face, she lightly covered her face with a fan and said that when Mr. Ling Yui came to his underworld in, her servant made a mistake and asked him to do the work of a waiter, for which she apologized. This was not what Ling Yui expected when he walked in on her, so her apology made the guy confused. He raised his palm in the air and made a relaxed face, saying that everything was fine and the hostess could just enjoy life. He understood that the owner was a stronger and more severe ghost than Zhu Jiang and her character was not as simple as his, so she should not know his true aura. The woman lowered her head a little and said that Ling Yui's standard of living is actually turning her hotel around. He calmly told her that he would pay tenfold for all the broken dishes and cutlery. She raised the outer corners of her eyebrows and closed her eyes slightly. The hostess said that the dishes are small things, but Jiang Nan has been working in the hotel for 100 years. Ling Yui immediately began to make excuses with a confused look, actively gesticulating. He replied that he was sorry that the cook killed her in such a way, but he was a rookie waiter, and the two senior employees were besieged, so he could not dissuade the cook. The hostess squeezed the handle of the fan so hard that it broke. She said it was an unexplained feud. The woman threw the broken fan aside and stood up. She said that in this case she was not going to get into an altercation with him. A strong fuchsia aura appeared around her. She asked for what purpose he came to the hotel, 
and it does not matter to her, even if he has a great past, because the people who provoke the civil strife that caused the death of her employees cannot simply be fired. The wind from her aura blew Ling Yui's hair, and her skull seemed to whistle from the air flow. He crossed his arms and asked what she wanted to say. The hostess shouted dissatisfiedly that Jiang Nan had made a great contribution to the development of the hotel, and without her it would be difficult to do business. She pointed her finger at him and ordered him to compensate for the damage caused by the dispersion of Jiang Nan's soul. He didn't expect this, so he stood in a stupor and was silent for a while, because he didn't think that this was all in order to compensate for the damage. The guy immediately calmed down and asked her how much she thought would be appropriate to pay. She didn't think the guy would agree to this. At first, in a quiet voice, barely moving her lips, she said about three guan. But then she changed her mind and said the number 50 guan, showing the number 5 with her fingers. Her face looked very serious and dissatisfied. Ling Yui raised his head up and sighed. When fully counted, the amount turned out to be only 50 guan, and it turned out that one strong ghost was equivalent to only 50 teapots. He called the system and ordered it to use the cashback card. Sparks seemed to come from his eyes, his eyebrows furrowed. A system window appears, the cashback card has been used. The next act of spending will bring from 2 to 10 random cashbacks. A huge pile of gold coins rained down onto the room from the ceiling, the sound of which echoed off the walls. This amount of money confused even the hostess, and she could not remain indifferent. Ling Yui raised his index finger up, pointing at the money, and said that he was giving her 50 guan, asking what she thought about her cook now working with him. Place all coins neatly in piles on the floor. The hostess looked at all the money with her mouth open and eyes wide. She looked at all the coins again, a little anxiously, wondering if this boy was so rich that he wanted to buy her cook. Ling Yui continued to stand proudly in the mistress's room. He realized that these harsh ghosts are nothing more than a tool to make money for the hostess, and he sees that Ju Jiang is also not happy with this place. The cook is strong, simple and sociable, and with the perfect contract to master the ghosts, he will be able to ignore their difference in levels and enter into a contract with Ling Yui. This is the best option for them and even for the hostess, according to the guy. He stopped smiling and took on a more serious tone. The hostess became thoughtful. She put her fist to her chin and looked down. She thought that the guy really had his eye on the big, stupid thug from the depths, but no matter how strong he was, to her he was just a cook. The woman was thinking about how she could sell it. She immediately began to bargain, saying in a feignedly pitiful voice that he had been with her for many years and the hotel would have a hard time without a cook. She lowered her head to her shoulder and waited for an answer from Ling Yui, looking at him from under her lowered eyelids. Immediately her pitiful tone disappeared and she, placing her hands on her hips, ordered him to add even more money. Ling Yui sighed in understanding. He snapped his fingers and ordered the system to cash out another million. The next moment, another pile of coins fell from the ceiling, plunging the room into gold. The hostess looked up with her mouth open in surprise. Ling Yui smiled faintly and politely asked if she would be happy with this. The money immediately convinced her, and she immediately agreed. She looked with pleasure at all the pile of coins that had fallen into the room. She had a small leaf hidden on her chest. She threw it towards Ling Yui, who deftly caught it. It was a contract between the hostess and the cook. It said that Zhu Jiang voluntarily placed himself at the disposal of the innkeeper of the afterlife. This contract automatically expired after Zhu Jiang earned 10,000 guan for the hotel. Ling Yui chuckled thoughtfully as he read their contract. The owner was ready to sell Zhu Jiang for 150 guan, and the contract was signed for 10,000 guan, which is equal to 10 million ritual money. The guy realized that given the fact that the most expensive menu in the establishment costs, only 100 when the cook's freedom was just an empty promise, and the hostess thus cunningly entered into an essentially unlimited contract. Ling Yui was glad that he now had the opportunity to enter into a contract with Zhu Jiang himself. He smiled and glowed with happiness. The hostess headed to her place and finally turned around to say that the chef would be free as soon as Ling Yui destroyed his contract but she did not guarantee that Zhu Jiang would sign a new contract with Ling Yui. Ling Yui walked towards the exit and waved the contract at her, saying that he had his own plans for the chef. With a serious face, he turned to her and asked how much money she would ask for if he entered into a contract with her or even if he decided to buy the entire hotel. She was taken aback by such a tactless question and lowered her head. For some time she stood with her back to him and was silent. She turned her head slightly in his direction and said that she and the hotel were not for sale. Ling Yui realized that money is not the only thing that matters in this game. He clasped his hands together and bowed slightly as a sign of respect, saying that in that case he would not dissuade her. 
He continued towards the exit while the hostess followed him with her gaze. As soon as he left the room, the woman pouted offensively and was disappointed that he did not even insist on buying, but she had a feeling that they would see each other again. At this time, Ling Yui went downstairs and headed towards the other players. From the side of the street he opened the door and began to enter. His presence caused the other players to take their minds off their tasks and pay attention to him. Li was delighted to see him. She smiled at him radiantly and called him by name. The strong man looked at him sullenly and silently. The girl with purple hair frowned and looked at the guy angrily, thinking that she shouldn't let her guard down, because in her opinion, Ling Yui is no less scary than ghosts. Ling Yui spread his hands to the side and smiled, apologizing for the delay and saying that he had made several deals with the innkeeper. This statement shocked the other players, and thoughts arose in their heads that he could not only laugh with the harsh ghosts, but even manage to charm the hostess. The burly man sitting on the floor shouted in surprise that according to the clue he received, Ling Yui must indeed be a beginner. He asked if it could be that he was from a secret family. In response, the guy said that it was all a series of accidents, after which he sat down next to everyone on the floor. The man's face looked shabby and had many scratches. He was surprised that the likes of Ling Yui actually existed, as he had only heard about it on form before. The guy furrowed his eyebrows and asked if there was a forum for players that allowed them to communicate with each other as part of an internal quest. The man nodded to him and answered positively. He turned his head towards Ling Yui and said that this was exactly what he was going to tell him about. The man threateningly turned to all the players sitting next to him and asked if they knew about the new National Investigation Center No. 9. Lee calmly looked in his direction and said that she had seen the news about them, asking if they had really started studying this game. The man answered positively and showed them a card with his photograph and the sign of the all-seeing eye. It was a work permit. He said that they can call the investigation center number 9 when they are out of the game and an official will come to them for verification. They can provide assistance to players, such as information and ways to exchange weapons. He threw this card into the hands of the girl with purple hair and she began to examine it. After that, the card was handed over to Ling Yui. The man also said that in this case their identity would be recorded and they would be required to tell the truth about what they saw and heard. This is equivalent to freelance status. Ling Yui carefully examined the man's work permit without saying anything. The man said that this is what he is doing now, many are joining them, and if they become the rightful ruler of the ghosts, and make a contract with their own ghost, they will have the opportunity to change their status. Later, when they team up with other full members, their survivability in the game will be much higher. The girls listened to him with interest and enthusiasm. Ling Yui handed the card back to the man and asked if they should also continue to participate in the games from now on. The man, taking the red and black card back, answered positively. He said players are called up every two weeks at odd hours at night. He heard that some experts might pay a certain price to come extra. The man ended his speech by saying that as dangerous as thrillers are, they are also full of possibilities. They all sat together in a circle, listening to the story of the experienced player. Ling Yui asked a little anxiously if the forum really had access to players of other thrillers, except for the investigation center number 9. The man leaned his only remaining hand on his leg and said that this was an anonymous site run by high-ranking ghost hunters. He looked down sullenly and said that there was a rule in the game that no one else could remember what they looked like when they left the quest and returned to reality. The forum is an official barrier zone for those who do not want to reveal their identity. Ling Yui nodded in understanding. The man looked towards the girls and asked if they had any more questions. They shook their heads. In this room, their mattresses were placed in the corners. They all went to bed. The man wished them good night and good luck tomorrow. Ling Yui hid under the blanket and closed his eyes. He called the system again. A system window appears. The cashback card has been activated for the host's latest purchase totaling 2 million yuan. Random return with 5 times multiplication. Congratulations to the owner for receiving 10 million yuan. Ling Yui waited with interest for the new task, narrowing his eyes slyly. A new system window has appeared. Task 3, keep spending and be honest. Status, not yet completed. Contents of the task, make three expenses in which the cost of the object exceeds 100,000 yuan, and the benefit is five times greater than the cost. It is also necessary that there is no active price increase, zero out of three are completed. Quest Reward, Cashback Card, Yin Ling Yuan Juice X5, Soul Retention Talisman X10, Soul Destruction Talisman X10. The next morning, the rooster started crowing, waking up everyone in the inn. Outside, the wind blew the tapestry through the air, and clouds covered the entire sky. Ling Yui was wrapped in a blanket and sitting on his mattress, pressed against the wall. 
He opened his eyelids slightly and looked around the room. It was another day in the ghost world for him. The guy got out of bed and began to stretch to warm up. To him, this was what Ghost Lords experience. Although he had not slept all night, he did not feel tired at all. After what he did yesterday, Zhang Nan is dead, old man Louis has been deceived, and the cook is no longer hostile to him. There were no incidents at night. Ling Yui walked to the door and began to look at it. Immediately after this, all the other players woke up. Lee and the strong man wished him good morning. The players looked sleep-deprived and tired. Ling Yui noted that all three players survived, but they were not in the best mood. There were loud knocks on the door, which scared everyone except Ling Yui. He told the others not to worry and assumed it was the accountant. The guy opened the red doors. Old man Louis was really waiting for him there, who smiled friendly at him, wishing the guy good morning. The guy started walking down to him and asked where Zhu Jiang was now. Louis politely told him that he should be in the kitchen. Ling Yui calmly replied that he understood everything and walked past the old man. The frightened accountant immediately wanted to remind him about the work. But the very next second he sighed and told himself to forget about it, because as he thought, a person like Mr. Ling Yui no longer needs to follow the rules of the hotel. He rudely ordered the other players to get to work. The purple-haired girl apologized and began to hurriedly run to her workplace, as did Lai. The strong man continued to stand at the aisle, following Ling Yui with his eyes, causing the accountant to loudly ask him why he was just standing still. He was amazed by Ling Yui, he stood there with his mouth open, thinking that he was indeed a person from an influential family. The chimney coming from the kitchen was emitting black, acrid smoke. Ling Yui walked up to the cook, who was cooking something on the stove, and wished him good morning. Zhu Zhang immediately greeted him cordially, pointing to the pan with the dish. He suggested we try his freshly made bone broth while it was still hot. The broth was green and you could see human bones and even a skull in it. Ling Yui awkwardly refused the dish, waving his hands, and said that he came to Zhu Jiang on business. The cook looked at him in surprise. With a perplexed face, he asked what business he had with him. Ling Yui asked with a serious expression whether Zhu Jiang was working in this hotel of his own free will. The cook was taken aback by this question and remained silent for several seconds in confusion. After that, he sadly lowered his head and replied that after all, he could not hide anything from his brother Ling Yui. Zhu Jiang said that at that time, he was a significant person in the depths of the ghost world, but he was attacked. He pointed to a huge cross-shaped scar on his chest. He sadly continued his story, where after a few weeks he was already on the verge of losing his soul, and he had no choice but to defect to the owner of this hotel. Ling Yui looked at him knowingly after listening to him carefully. The cook returned to preparing his broth, saying that although he had healed over the years, this housewife was not so simple. He made a pact with her, so he must stay here. Having stirred the acrid broth with a ladle, he said that for him there was no longer a wide world where he could taste delicacies and wine. Ling Yui lowered his eyebrows and asked with a serious face if Zhu Jiang would follow him across the two worlds if he gave him the chance. The cook took a break from cooking, pondering Ling Yui's words. He continued cooking, looking sadly at the pan, and said that the hostess would not let him go. Suddenly Zhu Jiang stopped stirring the broth. Ling Yui handed him two contracts. One of them was the contract between the cook and the hostess, and the second contract was for the voluntary service of Ling Yui. Zhu Jiang couldn't believe it. He raised his eyebrows and widened his eyes, asking how the guy did it. Ling Yui smiled slightly and replied that he had money. He told him that perhaps he could not promise him anything else, such as freedom, security. The guy tore the old contract into small pieces. Zhu Jiang looked in stupor at the falling pieces of paper that were once his contract with the mistress. Ling Yui looked at him slyly and added that there would definitely be a lot of wine. Zhu Jiang folded his hands in confusion as a sign of respect and agreed to his proposal. He said that since Ling Yui is willing to spend so much money on him, and besides, he really likes him, then he is willing to go through anything for his master. Zhu Jiang grabbed the new contract and threw his hands up in joy. He happily shouted that what was important to him was not the wine and food, but spending time with his friend. The former cook signed the contract and left his fingerprint there. Ling Yui looked at the contract, which stated that Zhu Jiang was now willingly serving Ling Yui. A system window appears, you have entered into a contract with the ghostly creature Zhu Jiang. Want to see its characteristics? Ling Yui immediately responded positively without hesitation. A system window appeared in front of Zhu Jiang. Contract, Zhu Jiang. Level, Fierce Ghost. Spiritual Awareness, 25-0. Spiritual Power, 36,900. 
Weapons, Superior Yin Apron, Superior Soul Destroying Killing Blade, Skill, Soul Destruction Technique. Zhu Jiang's performance was hundreds of times greater than Ling Yui's. His characteristics were very strong. Ling Yui continued to look at the new contract, thinking that the underworld and looked poor. But the threat of the spirits was truly terrifying. And if the quest had no restrictions on the rules and Ling Yui had not mastered the system, they would have died long ago. Zhu Jiang tasted his soup and praised it, while the guy looked at him and thought that this quest had revealed his hidden potential. Zhu Jiang clasped his hands together and knelt down on one knee in front of the guy. At first he wanted to call him his brother again, but quickly corrected himself and addressed him as a master, saying that from now on he would follow him. Ling Yui took his hands, crouched down, and asked him to be less formal, saying that he would rely on him from now on. He invited him to drink and have a good time. The very next minute they were clinking cups of wine with very happy faces. In the evening he sat at the table in the hall with Lee and a strong man. The number of survivors in this game appeared above their heads. There were only three of them. Ling Yui looked around the room, thinking that after he made the contract with Xu Jiang, the quest was no longer difficult for him. He glanced at Li and the bearded man, noting that they too had survived. However, that purple-haired girl was torn to pieces when she collided with a guest while cleaning. He reflected that, after all, it was an exciting game with ghosts running rampant. Ling Yui looked down with a slightly upset expression as he thought that even if he had a system, money and contracted ghosts, there was no such thing as invulnerability. The guy abruptly stood up from the table and clenched his hands into fists. He was thinking that according to the bearded man, the game opens every half month, so he must become stronger. He walked out of the hall and outside. Lee tried to call out to him. Ling Yui turned around and saw a girl running towards him. She called him again with an innocent, kind expression on her face. Lee awkwardly began fiddling with her fingers and thanked Ling Yui, because without him she would not have survived her first day. The girl said that by helping someone, he helps himself, and then handed him a small sheet. Ling Yui took it in his hands and then looked at it with a surprised and confused face. A phone number was written on the sheet. The girl blushed a little and said that she was actually from Jiang Cheng and her family had connections. She asked him to call her on this number if he needed help in the real world. A congratulations message appeared above their heads, signaling completion of the quest. After this, it was announced that the quest at the hotel was completed. The asphalt began to break off under Li and Ling Yui's feet. The guy wanted to say something to her finally, but didn't have time. He was moved to his apartment, but the sheet with Li's phone number was still in his hands. He looked at it again, making a slightly disgusted expression on his face, and then placed it on the table. He wanted to check something. The time on his wristwatch was the same as when he went to the game. In the game two whole days passed, but in reality it was only a second. Ling Yui summoned his ghost Xu Jiang. His eyes began to emit red lightning. The next second, an image appeared of Zhu Jiang sitting next to a huge barrel of wine. He asked Ling Yui what happened. The guy crossed his arms over his chest and replied that everything was fine. Zhu Jiang did not understand anything and continued drinking wine. This was all done so that Ling Yui could make sure that the contract with Zhu Jiang was stable in reality. A system window appeared, a panel of system elements. Four soul-cleansing wines of hell, a thousand-year-old petrified wood, a mirror of Kui Lan's soul imprisonment, a contract of the Lord of Ghosts. He touched his skull necklace, which gave off a purple aura. The guy made sure that all other items were also in place. The Ghost Lord is capable of not only taking spirits with him, but also weapons into reality. Ling Yui walked towards the window. He noted that the growing number of spooky incidents on the site in the past few years are largely the work of ghost hunters with evil intentions. Outside the window there was a night city with many residential buildings. Ling Yui looked at the gorgeous view and suggested that the world was no longer a safe place. He remembered the man who was in the game with him. An image appeared in his head of a man holding out his card. He then said that they would be drawn into the game every two weeks. Ling Yui exhaled in relief and shook his head. He decided that he had too many secrets and would not contact the administration now. For him, the forum was a better option for obtaining information than the investigation center number 9. At the computer, he quickly typed something, replacing the IP address. Ling Yui was intrigued, so he immediately pressed enter and was taken to the forum website. There were several discussions from players on the main page, including from the investigation center. It interested him, although the rest of the official announcements did not represent anything special to him. On Ling Yui's desk, in addition to the monitor and keyboard, there were headphones on a stand. The announcement from the investigation center outlined the main prohibitions, using unlawful means for personal gain, using psychic means to injure others, actively exposing the existence of a thriller game, 
and causing panic. After reading this list, Ling Yui became a little tense, saying that there will be huge consequences for those who break the rules. He leaned back in his chair and crossed his arms over his chest, smiling. The guy believed that having such an official organization would help deter the growing number of ghost hunters. But now he is a beginner. His main goal is to protect himself. Ling Yui decided to look at the player's guide. He clicked on the download link and opened the file. Images of ghosts were attached to the file. They looked very bright and were difficult to forget. A praying mantis, a spider, dragons, cyclops. Scary quests exist in a place called Ghost World. It is huge, and countless spirits live in it. However, ghosts can only kill according to clear rules. Humans have nine ranks, from one to nine. Ghosts are divided into seven classes, depending on their strength. In the images on the site, the offended ghost looked like a woman with purple skin. The evil ghost looked like a praying mantis with a horn on its forehead. The ferocious ghost had an evil face and sharp fangs. The ghoul had armor, the succubus looked like a young handsome man. And the king of ghosts had like a demonic face. He had long white hair. The Ghost Master contract is able to ignore level differences, which is why Ling Yui was able to obtain the Ferocious Ghost. The guy leaned on the table and began to more carefully read the information on the site. Scratching his chin with his hand, he said that judging by the information on the forum, five games have passed internal testing, and there are already 100,000 players. Besides the first batch, which was completely destroyed, there were survivors from all the others. Some of them had the opportunity to find the soul-cleansing wine of hell in the ghost world and become overlords. Lang Yui looked at the screen and tried to digest the information. The room was dim, lit only by the light from the monitor. The guy himself drank several bottles of the soul-cleansing wine of hell, and exactly three bottles were needed to pacify Zhu Jiang. The guy was actively scrolling through the forum pages in search of the information he needed. He still had to scroll a little to get to the right page. Many topics related to trading appeared on the screen. People were mainly looking for some materials or tutorials. Ling Yui looked at all this with a bored face and came to the conclusion that under the pressure of death, players inevitably need to trade supplies, and the forum provides such a platform. A notification appeared on the monitor screen with a corresponding sound. This was a new announcement from the forum administration about the fourth offline trading promotion. Lang Yui became interested and clicked on the notification. This was a post from a user with the nickname Quan Dao. He talked about the reasons for conducting an offline transaction. People can't see the product online and it is extremely risky, and rarely does anyone sell good and valuable things online. That is why the forum provided this opportunity to users. The administrators wanted to organize a fair in Zhongcheng. Ling Yui thought with a surprised face that messages on internet forums could not meet the demand for trade. Under the announcement of Quan Dao, many comments appeared thanking the author. Ling Yui smiled as he read them. He found that the people on the forum were really enthusiastic. This made him register on the forum too. He leaned back in his chair, putting his hands behind his head, thinking about his nickname. He took the nickname Emperor Fengdu because, according to legend, there was a city of ghosts in Fengdu County. Ling Yui entered this nickname and registered on the site by clicking the confirm button. Three days have passed. Several system windows have appeared. The most powerful wealth system has been launched. Today's random reward has arrived. Congratulations to the owner on receiving 6,452,000 afterlife money. The guy had already prepared his suitcase and was standing in the middle of the room. He ordered the system to open the panel. On the system window in front of him, information appeared about the balance, inventory, linked weapons, contract with ghosts, and the task. The guy looked contentedly at all his estates and proudly said that this was real wealth. He rolled his suitcase towards the exit, because today there will be a fair. He started his journey in Zhongcheng. Full of enthusiasm, Ling Yui walked out of his house. On Monday at 3.20 a.m. he received a personal message, and on Thursday at 5 p.m. he picked up his card, badge, and mask from the closet in the Dianjin shopping center. At 6 p.m., he was already driving a taxi along the Zhongcheng West Ring Road. In the car, he managed to put on a mask, which is why the driver looked at him strangely. By 8 p.m. they were already approaching an abandoned factory in King Yuan, Zhongcheng. The sky had already become dark, and thick smoke was pouring out of one of the plant's chimneys. The plant itself, although it looked gloomy, generally did not look abandoned. There were two ghosts standing at the entrance, checking the participants' badges. A whole line of players lined up nearby, including Ling Yui. He looked at his red badge. He had a white mask on his face, reminiscent of a carnival. 
he thought that anonymous offline meetings from the forum are really complex and safe. The mask is capable of blocking foreign spirits, and the badge also has protection against Kai counterfeiting. Ling Yui was approached by another player wearing a purple mask. He had blonde hair and a goatee. He looked strong and strong. The man said that the ghost controlled by Bai Yi, one of the three founders of the two forums, is a relatively powerful evil spirit. Ling Yui, after listening to him, realized that the power of this Yin energy is at the level of evil spirits, which is indeed much worse than Zhu Jiang. But the ability to be used as a gatekeeper should not be this Bai Yi's trump card. The ghost at the entrance carefully examined the badge with the nickname Ling Yui and said that it must be worn to enter the trading floor. He handed it back to the guy and warned that before selling any item, it must first be appraised in an appraisal office. The guy looked to the side and saw three people in red robes and gold masks. They stood around the device with the beam. Ling Yui put a name tag on his chest and said that the device looked very modern and asked if it could really determine the quality of weapons and materials. Ling Yui looked at the badge of the man who was talking to him and realized that he was the same Quan Dao from the forum. Quan Dao asked if this was the guy's first time at such a fair. He explained that it was a tool created by the Number 9 Research Center, capable of classifying objects into categories according to their aura with each category being divided into three more classes. Ling Yui imagined this device in action, firing a beam to test it. Quan Dao added to his story by saying that there are some items that are not easily divided into classes, such as amulets and elixirs. For such things, the forum specifically invited three experienced players to evaluate them. He laughed loudly and good-naturedly, telling Ling Yui that he need not be afraid, because he would not be deceived here. The guy thoughtfully thanked him for the information. Ling Yui looked at the device with a calm expression and thought that the technology at their disposal and the strength of the earliest batches of players were even more terrifying than he had imagined. He was glad that he had not yet reached the point of arrogance and complacency. The guy looked at the plant with hope, clenching his fists. He hoped that this fair would bring him much benefit. The device has already begun its work, checking the quality of the items brought by the players. One of the experts said that this is a lower first-class yin weapon that functions like a spell. He said that the player was lucky, pointing to the red sheet with hieroglyphs on their device. The player emotionally thanked the expert for the assessment. Quan Dao turned to Ling Yui and told him that a lower first-grade yin weapon, even a research weapon, could be worth hundreds of thousands. Ling Yui was surprised that they cost so much. He remembered his items, like a necklace with skulls. Since a low-quality research type can cost so much, he is afraid that his medium-quality weapon, the Enmity Skull Necklace, which represents the functions of attack and defense, will be priceless. The guy in a striped sweater approached the experts and the device. The expert gave his verdict. Xuanyi and iron ore is not the main material for weapons. The assessment satisfied him, and he joyfully moved on. After him, the next player brought his item for evaluation. The expert said it was a necklace that had lost so much yin energy that it was no longer valuable. This upset the guy. Behind him in line were Ling Yui and Quan Dao. When the player with the necklace was crying and passing by Ling Yui, a system window appeared in front of him. Yin energy detected. Damaged ghost necklace. Thanks to this, Ling Yui realized that the expert's view was still strong, and it matched the system's assessment. He passed the Quan Dao forward to evaluate his item, pointing at the device with his hand. Ling Yui knew that there was no guarantee that there wouldn't be some weird and wonderful things happening, and this was his chance to have fun. Quan Dao announced with an excited exclamation that it was finally his turn. He placed old white bandages on the device. While the machine was making its assessment, Quan Dao closed his eyes and clasped his hands together, praying that his item would be of average quality. The device finished testing with a beeping sound. Quan Dao didn't understand what happened. One of the experts took a closer look at the bandages and said that, apparently, it was neither a weapon nor a material. Another bespectacled expert said that this item seemed to contain strong yin energy. The third, mustachioed and bald expert said that he could not determine where the energy came from, after which he announced that they could not assess its quality, so Quan Dao was free to set the price. An upset Quan Dao walked past Ling Yui with his bandage and said that he was surprised that even the experts failed the assessment. The guy tapped the man on the shoulder and encouraged him by saying that he might meet an interested buyer here. Quan Dao just sighed sadly and lowered his head. He even started crying. Ling Yui turned around and looked at the bandage. A system window has appeared. The highest quality yin energy has been detected. The ominous pharaoh bandage. The guy's pupils narrowed and his mouth parted. He carefully read the description of the highest quality of the item. He was distracted from his thoughts by an expert with long hair who asked him what he wanted to evaluate. 
Ling Yui walked closer to the device and asked the system to give him one Wen coin. He tossed one coin onto the table to check, deciding not to stick his head out and dump a whole bunch of coins. The instrument began its assessment, making machine sounds. The coin was illuminated with green rays. The long-haired expert reached for the coin with a disinterested face and said that it was quite ordinary material and if there were a hundred of them, the total would be almost lower third grade. The bespectacled expert pulled him back and asked him to stop. He said that everything is not so simple, because this yin energy is so pure that it does not have any impurities. He looked at the coin carefully with a worried look and realized that it was from the bank of heaven and earth and asked if it was the currency used among the ghosts. After that, he tossed a coin to the bald expert so that he would also express his opinion. The expert said that the quality of this coin is even better than those he saw in the quest. He tensed a little and sweat started running down his face from excitement. The first expert who heard this widened his eyes and his pupils constricted. He said that one of the hidden rules of the ghost world is this. People who have inferior coins are simply nobody there. If someone wants to make an exchange with the spirit, then nothing will work out. Ling Yui imagined a man sitting in a dungeon with a chest full of coins, but he was surrounded by many ferocious and evil ghosts, preparing to attack him. But if people can get the coins, which the ghosts themselves approve, it will be equivalent to the fact that there is a guarantee from the bank of heaven and earth behind it, so they can safely trade in the quest. Ling Yui imagined himself sitting on a throne, surrounded by a huge amount of money. Next to him were two beautiful girls, and behind him was the bank of heaven and earth. In front of him, he was served by a ghost who was drawing water from the well. The bald expert looked at Ling Yui excitedly and thought that ghosts did not easily allow currency to pass into the hands of human hunters, and he was afraid that Ling Yui was actually a skilled craftsman. The guy proudly straightened his name tag with his nickname, smiling faintly. The expert read his nickname Emperor Fengdu and realized that they had never heard this name before, guessing that he was either a newcomer or a mysterious loner from the third batch. The bald expert frowned and asked where Ling Yui got this thing from. The guy decided not to tell him the whole truth. He looked him in the eye and replied that it was a trophy. The long-haired expert looked at the coin again and said thoughtfully that it was ritual money. He immediately made a crazy expression and invited Ling Yui to sell him a coin at the price of 15 yuan and become friends with him. This sentence made Ling Yui surprised and thoughtful. He first decided to exchange coins for one and a half million, because this would be enough for the down payment on a house in Liangcheng. The bald expert looked arrogantly at his colleague and asked why he shouldn't agree to 15 But immediately after that he said that when exchanging ghosts, it is not just the face value that is important, but the amount of yin energy and its integrity. He took the coin surrounded by a purple aura into his hands and said that this coin was completely new and intact and they were willing to buy it for 3,000 yuan each. Ling Yui took the bag off his shoulder and agreed to the deal, but warned that he had a few more of these coins and asked if they could afford them. The bald expert looked at him proudly and said in a calm voice that even if he took out 180 pieces, their form would still be able to buy them. Ling Yui exhaled in a relaxed manner and opened his bag. The next moment, he poured out a whole bunch of coins directly onto the expert's table. This made them wonder and look at so many coins with their jaws dropped. The rest of the players couldn't stay away and were also shocked. Huan Dao also couldn't contain his emotions and was surprised. While the other experts were still in a daze, the bald expert hurriedly took out his smartphone and said that he would contact Ms. Bai Yi immediately. A pure, golden light emanated from the coins. The purple-haired expert excitedly pointed out a number with his fingers and said that the uniform couldn't spend that much money at once, and asked if he could sell some of it to him. He first offered to take 20 coins for 35 oh each, but then suggested a value of 4,000. Players passing by were also interested in buying. The crowd immediately rushed towards Ling Yui, which is why they didn't even notice how they knocked down Quan Dao, who fell on his hand. A crowd of players surrounded Ling Yui. They begged to sell them coins, and someone even said that he was rank 4, and if Ling Yui sold them to him, then he would promise not to treat him badly. Quan Dao lay on the ground and watched all this silently. He then said with a disappointed face that he just didn't thank him and asked Ling Yui not to be angry with him. The guy himself didn't hear him. He stood among all this crowd and smiled, thinking that this was truly an overnight success, as expected from the wealth system. He looked at the other players, realizing that this was not an auction where the highest bidder wins. There are also factors such as organization, Q, favor of the powerful, and so on, which must be taken into account. Someone loudly ordered everyone to be quiet. The crowd immediately calmed down and turned in surprise towards the source of the voice. A girl with long white hair and a tight silk dress was walking towards Ling Yui, 
holding a lantern on a stick in her hands. The experts immediately bowed respectfully to her in greeting. This girl was Miss Bai Yi. She wore a gold mask with patterns on her face, and she wore gloves on her hands. Bai Yi walked towards Ling Yui proudly, causing everyone to be surprised. Ling Yui thought that she was one of the founders of the forum, who could force evil spirits to be minions. The guy bowed his head in front of her and greeted her. She immediately went towards the table with the money. Ling Yui turned his head towards her. Bai Yi picked up one gold coin and began to examine it. She noted that their quality was excellent and told Ling Yui that such good things were a little wasteful to take from an offline fair for mass sale. The guy decided to lie and smiled slyly at her, saying that he had some urgent business recently and was a little short of money. She threw the coin into the pile with the others and asked them to sell her one guan for seven and a half million in cash. She elegantly said that on behalf of the forum she would like to make friends with him. The fat player in the blue mask asked in shock if she really wanted to befriend him on behalf of the forum. His golden masked friend talked about the rumors that she was already at the peak of the sixth rank and was almost a goddess in the Zia kingdom, not to mention the forum behind her. He also recalled that in the thriller, after the first three quests, ghost hunters can become friends with each other and form a team. Bai Yi silently waited for Ling Yui's response, looking at him with her big blue eyes. Someone shouted that friendship with Miss Bai Yi is almost like a saving talisman. A bunch of players immediately ran towards them to look at their deal. Ling Yui agreed and said that as expected from Lady Bai Yi, she is truly like a goddess. The guy forced the Wen coins to bunch together, thereby forming one guan. Bai Yi looked at her lantern and ordered the toad to come to her. Thick smoke came out from the bottom of the box, after which a pink ghost of a large toad appeared. She had a metal case in her mouth. She spat it out and the case flew towards Ling Yui. The guy realized that this was a kind of test and grinned. He summoned Zhu Jiang, and the next second a formidable ghost appeared behind him. The visitors did not expect such a sudden appearance of a strong spirit. Zhu Jiang stopped the case on the fly. One of the players opened his mouth wide, amazed at how easily he did it. Zhu Jiang opened the case and knelt down on one knee in front of Ling Yui. There were stacks of money in the case, and the ghost asked to check everything. Ling Yui confirmed that everything was fine. After that, the case slammed shut, and Zhu Jiang evaporated along with it. Ling Yui handed one guan to Bai Yi, saying that this was a good deal. She took the jingling coins with an emotionless face. The girl threw coins into her toad's mouth. Bai Yi bowed her head to Ling Yui and said that they would see each other again. The light from her lantern illuminated everything around, after which she disappeared, leaving only a golden trail in the air. All the visitors were surprised that she left so quickly. They announced over the loudspeaker that the offline fair was officially open. The players immediately turned their attention away from talking about Bai Yi. Golden magical smoke appeared on the street. From it emerged tables and chairs for those who were going to sell their items. The sellers immediately ran to take good places. They shouted to each other about available seats. The mustachioed player wanted to ask Ling Yui if he still had coins, but the guy didn't even listen. He replied that all his goods were sold out and he had other things to do next, so he would not take up any more of their time. He began to walk down the stairs, leaving the player in bewilderment. The sellers quickly occupied all the tables and began inviting customers to look at their goods. Someone shouted that all the people who approached him became his regular customers, and someone shouted that people are kind by nature, and they do not make deceptive deals. Ling Yui also walked between the tables, looking at the goods. He couldn't believe he got seven and a half million in one go. The guy began to look for items to purchase. He was full of enthusiasm and walked with a smile on his face. First, the guy approached the first seller's table. Several system windows appeared, material detected, bloody fruit, no rating. A weapon was discovered, a fragment of a black bronze glove was broken. Ling Yui sighed dissatisfiedly, turned around and left, causing the seller to cry. The guy then walked over to a table with various masks. He understood that most of those items that do not have a certificate of authenticity are garbage. He had to be patient to find the right one. System window appears, weapon detected, Luohu sinister cube of medium quality. Ling Yui didn't expect that he would find what he needed so soon. He turned sharply to the cube seller. It was of average quality, a weapon of the same class as the enmity skull necklace. The seller of this cube was sitting at the table reading a book. Ling Yui saw a purple aura around the cube, realizing that it was black and made of wood. The guy took the product in his hands and asked how much the player was selling it for. 
That player, full of enthusiasm, realized that this was the guy who was selling coins and showed the number two with his fingers. He said that he found this specimen in the tomb quest. It has a weak yin aura and he never understood its purpose. He quoted the cost as 2,000 yuan. Ling Yui handed the band notes to the happy seller and said that he was buying. A system window appears, a weapon has been detected. The ominous Luohu cube is automatically attached to the owner. He smiled with a satisfied face, looking at the aura. Now his defense and attack are not tied to one subject. While walking around the fair, Ling Yui bought a few more items, ghost vine material, despair chalice weapon, heartbreaking shock material. He was happy about his big catch. Soon he noticed a table in the corner at which a familiar player was sitting. The seller hummed something under his breath. Ling Yui approached him and recognized him as Quan Dao. The man greeted the guy, taking a break from his business. On his table were various Egyptian-themed objects with pyramids, cats and crosses. Ling Yui said that he has a lot of good things on his table. Quan Dao scratched his head awkwardly and said that these were just a bunch of low-quality desert trinkets, and if Ling Yui needed them, he would sell them cheap. Ling Yui picked up the headband and said that this was the thing that could not be valued and asked its price. Quan Dao crossed his arms and said that he understands that Ling Yui is very rich, but he must warn him that he cannot vouch for the quality of the item. Ling Yui answered him in a friendly manner that money should be spent, not saved. They looked at each other for a while, after which Quan Dao extended his hand to the guy and said that in this case he would give the bandage just like that. Ling Yui was taken aback by this answer, making a strange expression on his face. Quan Dao thoughtfully covered his mouth with his hand and replied that it would be in vain to keep it, since even experts could not help with it anyway, and if Ling Yui could use it. He smiled friendly, lowering his eyelids, and said that he was also willing to make friends with Ling Yui, because he is a strong person. The guy closed his eyes and smiled, squeezing the bandage in his hand. He replied that he could not let Quan Dao suffer. One Guan appeared on his desk. Quan Dao did not expect such a generous payment, so he even jumped up from his seat. He couldn't believe that Ling Yui gave him Guan worth seven and a half million yuan. Ling Yui smiled enthusiastically, tying a bandage on his arm, and said that he would not waste an ordinary Guan coin for such power. The bandage immediately burst into flames with a fiery aura. Several system windows appeared, high-quality weapons were detected, an ominous pharaoh headband, automatically linked to the owner. The fair was still going on at the abandoned factory. Someone verified the authenticity of their product. Elsewhere in the corridor stood the door to the control room. The sign of a red eye was visible on the sign. In the control room, the eye-shaped screen showed an image of Quan Dao and Ling Yui shaking hands. They were watched by the expert and Bai Yi. The expert, with a skeptical face, asked the girl why this guy was buying an unvalued item. She looked at the screen with a calm face and replied that she didn't know, but said that this guy was really interesting. She crossed her arms over her chest and fell silent. An image of Ling Yui and his ghost Xu Zhang appeared in her mind. She began to think that he was only a first rank judging by her spiritual consciousness, but in response to her temptation, he released a ferocious ghost. An image of Ling Yui with a bandage on her arm appeared on the screen. Bai Yi was afraid that he knew how to disguise his aura so that even she could not see it, but he also knew how to evaluate objects. She smiled slyly, putting a finger to her chin, saying that he was a very intriguing guy. There were still a lot of people in the fairgrounds, some were even holding an auction. Ling Yui was exhausted, but he was able to buy a lot of things. Almost all the money he earned was spent, and he thought about selling some of his things. He noticed the crowd that had gathered at one of the tables. One of the players asked how a non-hunter dares to acquire such things. A man in a suit and a green mask sat at the table. He had a sign on his desk stating that he was willing to buy at a high price an item that could be used to awaken spiritual consciousness and spiritual power. He had one more requirement, the item should not have side effects. The player in the pink mask began to argue with the man, saying that things that can awaken a person's spiritual consciousness are already valuable, and those that do not have side effects are even rarer. His friend was asking how he could become a ghost hunter without paying a price. Behind them, Ling Yui made his way through the crowd towards the man. The man stood up from the table and, with his hand on his chest, shouted that they, the Jiang Cheng Nan group, were willing to pay the appropriate price, and if there really were no side effects, he was willing to pay $10 million. The player with pink hair thought about it and replied that this was a fair price. His friend realized that this was a man from the Nan group, and they controlled half of Dodge's ocean trade. Ling Yui read the name on the man's badge, Nan. He realized that it sounded like a girl's name. 
He immediately remembered Lee, because she hadn't awakened her spiritual consciousness either, it didn't seem like a coincidence. Ling Yui lowered his gaze before taking out the soul-purifying hell wine. He has already drunk his quota. He decided to leave two bottles for Zhu Jiang, and decided to help both himself and Lai with the last one. He walked over to the table and placed a bottle of wine on it. He told the man that by drinking it he could awaken his spiritual consciousness. The man looked closer at the bottle with a shocked face. He could not believe that everything turned out to be so simple. Ling Yui looked at him with a fierce look and replied that everything is really that simple, and if he doesn't believe in it, then he shouldn't have anything to do with him. The confused man backed away a little and replied that he believed him. He loosened his tie a little. Then, he took out some paper and handed it to Ling Yui. It turned out to be a check for $10 million, which he could write to Li at any time. Ling Yui took the check and thanked the man. All the other players stood silently, not even knowing what to say. Night has come. The stars began to appear one after another in the dark sky. The Nan family mansion looked very rich and expensive. It had several floors. Li stood on the balcony and was sad. She regretted that her father did not allow her to go to the fair, because once she became a participant in the game, she was not destined to escape the cruelty of the world. She put her hands under her head and looked down sadly. She was sad that Ling Yui never called her, and she doesn't even know if he was even at the fair. A man in a suit entered the balcony. He waved with a smile on his face and called her name, saying that he bought something that could awaken her spiritual consciousness. Li turned to him in bewilderment. The man took out a bottle of the soul-cleansing wine of hell. There was a green aura around her. Li immediately thought that it was similar to the wine that Ling Yui drank before. She took the bottle in her hands and looked at it with a happy look. She thought that Ling Yui was willing to sell the treasure that even the stern ghosts were so passionate about. The man asked in confusion who Ling Yui was. Li opened the bottle, pulling out the cap. The aroma began to emanate in all directions, and Li immediately realized that this was the same wine. She was very happy about this. The man asked to drink it quickly, because then she would have spiritual consciousness to survive the quest. She took a sip, realizing that she could no longer rely on others for protection. Green luminous drops entered the girl's body, saturating her with strength. Her eyes began to glow green, and an aura of the same color surrounded her from head to toe. She believed that she should become strong, and the next time she met Ling Yui, she should be useful to him. At this time, Ling Yui found information about Lai. He came across an article about her. She then won first prize in a student essay competition in Jiangcheng. Attached to the article was a photo of Ling Yui holding a certificate in her hands. The article said that in the finals of the student essay competition on the topic of a new beginning Jinchen, Li took first place with her essay My Dad is the President of the Company. In an interview, she mentioned that as the only daughter of the Nan Group president, she appeared bright, but was actually a sentimental and gentle girl. The judges said that when they read her essay they thought it was off-topic, but the content was excellent and they were pleasantly surprised. Now Ling Yui had no doubt that it was really her. He sat back with a smile on his face and said that in the midst of an exciting game, even the super rich are just as vulnerable as the average person. He put on a serious expression and said that even he, who relied on a system with almighty ritual money, could not take this lightly. He imagined how a huge ghost worm with sharp legs killed players in a thriller game. Ling Yui understood that although ghosts are limited by rules, over time the restrictions become more lenient as they delve deeper into the world of ghosts. For example, the hide-and-seek quests mentioned on the forum, where the only way for players to survive is to escape. He stood up from his chair and clenched his fists, saying that one day there would be no more room in the rules for good mediators, and then they would have to fight ghosts. He called the system, a system window appears, current level, first rank ghost lord. Spiritual Awareness, 30. Spiritual Strength, 397. Requirements for Rank 2 Ghost Lord. Spiritual Awareness, 50. Spiritual Strength, 500. Ling Yui stood in the middle of the room with his arm extended forward. He said that after two weeks of practicing the meditation method from the textbooks on the forum, he was not far from being promoted to second rank. Moreover, it seems that due to the growth of spiritual consciousness, the system begins to more clearly recognize the class and function of weapons. The system displayed an image of his weapons, a skull necklace, a small cube with a skull on it, a headband. Several system windows have appeared. The first grade medium quality enmity skull necklace can withstand the onslaught of yin at the level of the ghost general, can also retain the injected yin and carry out a counterattack when necessary. 
Luo Huominous Cube of Medium Quality, 3rd Grade, Injecting Spiritual Energy Activates a Hidden Mechanism that Emits Ghostly Spikes. The Sinister Pharaoh Headband is of the highest quality, 2nd Class, covering the wounds caused by ghosts. It can suck out the yin energy from them and quickly heal you. When spiritual power is infused into the headband, it can wrap around a ghost and absorb its yin energy to restrict movement. Ling Yui immediately put on all the weapons available to him. He had a bandage in his right hand and a cube in his left. He stood proudly and spoke of how he now had two medium-quality yin weapons, one for attack and one for defense, as well as one top-quality weapon for control and healing. He was glad that his own combat power was finally taking shape. A red blood clock appeared in the room and struck 12 midnight. Several system windows have appeared. Welcome to the thriller game. The name of this quest, Otherworldly Boarding House. Ling Yui read everything carefully. Under his feet, the floor had already begun to fall apart into red fragments, opening a passage to the other world. He was full of self-confidence and flew down with excitement. A system window appears. Welcome to the game. Quest name, Otherworldly Boarding House. Purpose of the task, survive in the boarding house for three days and pay the rent in full. Current survivors, three. Ling Yui suddenly opened his eyes, not knowing where he ended up. He looked around and realized that he was in a boarding house room. There was a nightstand next to the bed and a lamp on it. The guy himself woke up on the bed and only after that he realized that he had already moved. He turned his head to the right and saw a sheet on the wall with rules and conditions. Firstly, the card is the only one the resident has. If lost, it cannot be replaced. Ling Yui took a gray card from the nightstand. Secondly, the guest house does not allow noise throughout the day. The guy looked at the window. It was protected by bars, like in prison cells. The sky was foggy and dark. Third, the area around the Otherworld guest house is not safe or quiet, so residents should be careful when opening doors and try not to open windows. Fourth, do not invade other people's rooms without their permission. Fifthly, the boarding house will conduct regular inspections, so it is forbidden to litter and damage your room. Ling Yui walked towards a darkened mirror that had a digital clock on top. They showed 6 a.m. There was a dressing table under the mirror and a bucket of water next to it. Sixth, the curfew starts at 11 p.m., so you need to know the time. Ling Yui, after reading the rules, realized that these were the killing rules that were common to most of the ghosts in the quest. He turned back and looked around the bed and nightstand. He grinned contentedly and closed his eyes. In his opinion, the purpose of the task is not something to worry about, because if he just paid the ritual money for rent, he could stay here and calmly wait for the end. However, this is not the best option for him. He applied the card to the lock on the door, after which it opened. Ling Yui believed that if you simply survive in every quest, sooner or later you will slide down, as the enemy will become stronger and stronger. That's why he was going to take every opportunity to increase his strength. Ling Yui confidently walked out of his room. He found himself in a long, bright corridor. The guy noticed that there were a lot of rooms here, but there were no people visible. The corridor resembled a large terrace. On the floors above and below there was exactly the same structure. Nearby there were two transparent, semicircular elevator shafts. Ling Yui looked down and said that when entering the quest, it was indicated that there were only three survivors. He looked up and saw a huge number of identical floors. He realized that all these dense, beehive-like rooms could be haunted. The guy walked further along the same type of corridor with a bunch of doors and noticed the zoning scheme for the boarding house. There was a revolving restaurant on the 30th floor. From the 26th to 29th floors there was a private area closed to the public. From the 5th to 25th floors there were all living quarters. On the 4th floor there were warehouses and living quarters for staff. On the 3rd floor there was the real estate center of the Otherworld guest house, where you can pay rent and top up your room card. On the second floor there was a paid entertainment center, a luxury clothing store for members only, and a security office. On the ground floor there was an outdoor activity area, a supermarket, an indoor food court and a laundry room. Ling Yui read everything carefully and realized that this time the map was many times larger than that of the underworld in. He turned around and headed towards the elevator. The guy decided to go to the real estate center on the third floor and see what was happening there. He pressed the button and waited for the arrival. The elevator arrived a few seconds later and began to open its iron doors. The entire inside of the elevator was stained with blood, there were even bloody handprints. Ling Yui tensed and scratched his nose. He guessed that an ordinary person would not dare to ride this elevator. He entered it fearlessly and smiled faintly. The heavy elevator doors slammed shut. The guy was confident that with his strength he would definitely be able to protect himself. He pressed the button for the floor he needed. 
There was also blood all over the elevator control panel. Suddenly the lights in the elevator went out, an ominous voice asked to pay for using the elevator. Ling Yui tensed and turned sharply towards the source of the voice. He saw a terrifying purple creature with a huge mouth and strong teeth. His body resembled many appendages, on which there were growths that pulsated and made strange sounds. Suddenly, purple, glowing pupils appeared in his dark eye sockets. Ling Yui was not at a loss. He smiled and asked how much the elevator fee was. The ghost smiled, showing all his long teeth. He replied that the fee for one person at a time is one yuan. He threatened Ling Yui that if he couldn't pay, he could take his flesh and blood kai or his soul to clear the debt. Ling Yui smiled perplexedly, thinking that it was very cheap and too conscientious. The ghost didn't understand his reaction, so he stared back at him with a blank face. Ling Yui asked the system to exchange 100 single note ritual money with a relaxed smile. A stack of bills immediately appeared in his hand. He cheekily threw one bill towards the ghost and ordered him to take him to the third floor. The ghost caught the bill in his big mouth and then closed the bill with his teeth. He couldn't believe that this weak human being could find the money. The ghost tore the bill and looked at Ling Yui angrily. The guy realized that even though this was his rule for killing, judging by his face, he wanted to do something now. The ghost opened his mouth wide and angrily shouted that the guy just gave cash, and it doesn't count, because this elevator is part of the otherworldly guest house and only supports credit card purchases, and if he is not a member of the club, he can use his room card. The white of the ghost's eyes became covered with cracks from anger. He believed that the newcomers probably had not yet bothered to replenish their supplies, and he would never let him in without bloodshed. Ling Yui sighed tiredly, closing his eyes and lowering his head. He put his hand forward and said irritably that he had given the evil ghost a chance. The ghost did not understand what he was talking about, so at first he was confused. After that, he returned to being a rude and arrogant ghost, saying that directly using ritual money was a serious crime and if the guy willingly gave his hand, he might consider not prosecuting him. Ling Yui looked back at him coldly and snapped his fingers. A menacing, huge Xu Zhang immediately appeared behind him. The contracted ghost said it was very crowded here. With one blow, he was able to tear out one of the ghost's three eyeballs, causing him to groan pitifully in pain. Xu Zhang was furious, he looked at the ghost menacingly and asked if he wanted his master's hand. The ghost from the boarding house could not even imagine that everything would end this way. Zhu Jiang took a step back. The ghost from the boarding house began to cry bitterly and plaintively asked if it was a fierce ghost. Suddenly he suddenly spat something out of his mouth. The ghost was very scared. Zhu Jiang deftly caught the object spat out by the ghost and clenched it into a fist. He extended his palm to Ling Yui and showed that there was a coin there. Ling Yui took the coin in his hands and looked at the ghost with irritation. Zhu Jiang behaved calmly. The ghost immediately began to make excuses in confusion, saying that he was joking and he didn't need the guy's hand and didn't need the money. He said that from now on they may not have to pay to ride the elevator. Ling Yui began tossing a coin in the air and looked at the ghost from under his brows. He replied that then the ghost really knows how to joke. Zhu Jiang, without a moment's hesitation, stabbed his sharp sword into the ghost's right eye. The same spirit screamed in pain, opening its mouth wide. Glowing blood immediately poured out of the ghost's eye in all directions. Zhu Jiang looked thoughtfully at the ghost and replied that the ghost is one with this elevator, and if they cut it, then the elevator will stop. Ling Yui looked to the side boredly and said that then they would let the ghost live. Zhu Jiang pulled out his blade from the ghost's eye, and he immediately began to thank Ling Yui and called him a VIP guest. There was a red, ominous aura floating around the elevator. Zhu Jiang was still able to gouge out the ghost's eye, leaving a large cross-shaped scar in its place. Ling Yui threw back into his mouth the coin he had previously spat out. He continued to hold his hand in front and with an arrogant face asked to tell him honestly what otherworldly membership is. The ghost began to tremble with fear and stutter. He made a pitiful face and replied that these are the most privileged residents of the apartments and a symbol of high status. They have access to high-class places and even the rules of the boarding house are unhindered for them. Leng Yui asked confusedly about the unhindered rules. The ghost, looking directly at the guy, replied that it seemed that members were subject to special membership rules, which were set individually by council members. Leng Yui was silent for a while, placing his hand on his chin. Then, he asked how he could become an otherworldly member. The ghost trembled in embarrassment and even sweated from exertion. He replied that he was just a small low-level ghost and could only maneuver in the elevator shaft and listen to the chatter of passengers, and did not know any details. Ling Yui stood in front of the bloody wall with a pensive look and reflected that in this otherworldly guesthouse quest, membership was definitely an important achievement. 
he needed to find a way to get into the otherworldly membership as soon as possible. The yellow number 3 lit up on the screen in the elevator. The ghost crawled onto the ceiling of the elevator, opening a passage for Zhu Jiang and Ling Yui, and announced that they had arrived on the third floor. The guy walked out of the elevator with an arrogant face and ordered Zhu Jiang to go back. He obeyed him and disappeared, leaving behind golden ribbons in the air. Ling Yui began to walk down the third floor hall. He met two ghost women who had no legs. Ghosts in formal suits walked towards him. In the hall there were sofas, tables and cabinets. He stopped in the middle of the hall and looked around. Next to it was a water cooler and red chairs. Ling Yui realized that there were only four zones, which were empty and spacious. The first of the zones was the payment department. It looked like a typical office with computers and office workers distributed among the visiting windows. Then there was an information department, on the wall behind the counter where various advertisements and offers hung. Next there was the real estate center. It was an office with computers and workers. And at the very end was the complaints department. Their glass door was covered with various sheets of paper, but behind it one could see sofas and armchairs with cushions. In addition, there were strange chains and hooks. The complaints department surprised Ling Yui greatly. He raised one eyebrow and stood with his mouth slightly open, arms crossed over his chest. He couldn't believe there was even a complaints department here. He wondered if this was done to complain about ghosts. He was interested in looking at the information department, but first he decided to pay his bills and withdraw money at the same time. The guy quickly walked towards the orange door. He opened it and began to enter the unfamiliar room. There were several service windows, behind which sat ghosts at computers. There were leather chairs near the windows and sofas along the walls for those whose turn had not yet come. There was no one in the room except the workers and Ling Yui, so all the windows were clear. All the ghosts looked like people in formal suits, but they had a bright blush with a clear outline, pale skin and red lips. Their eyes were also unnaturally large with small pupils. Ling Yui looked at them with a calm face and realized that these were first-level ghosts, and they were weaker than the accountant and Zhang Nan from the Underworld Hotel. The guy took out his room card with the number 1202. This was his room number. The system of the Otherworld boarding house is too colossal, and there must be higher ghosts on the upper floors, and all these office workers are nothing more than midges whose blood they suck. Ling Yui walked to the service window and handed the employee his card. He politely said that he would like to pay for his room. The employee didn't seem to care. After a while, he disgustedly took Ling Yui's card with a disdainful face. He gave Ling Yui's room number and said that he was a new resident. The ghost swiped the card's magnetic stripe across the cash register. The information immediately flashed on his monitor, and he read to Ling Yui that he would need to pay a total of 2,500 ritual money for the room, utilities, maintenance, and property management. Food, drinks, and accommodations also had to be charged to the card. Ling Yui thought as he put his hand to his chin. He noticed that the prices here were much higher than in the Inn of the Afterlife. The ghost with a disgusting expression showed the number 5 with his hands and said that at least 500 yuan must be paid as a deposit before today's curfew, and 25 yuan must be paid in full within 3 days. Otherwise, they will take money in other ways. Ling Yui, on the other side of the window, calmly asked if they would take the flesh, blood and soul. The ghost made a blank face and was surprised that this did not scare the guy. He handed the card back, throwing it roughly. The worker with a bored face turned away from Ling Yui and said that the guy had recently moved in and couldn't pay for his services, so he suggested that he go to the information center and find some work. The guy took his card back. He looked at her, lowered his gaze and realized that one of the functions of the information center was to post information about work. The ghost back at him to swear. He hit the counter and asked if he was deaf for not going out to look for work. Ling Yui leaned against the window with a smile on his face and tried to say something but the worker immediately interrupted him by jumping up from his seat. He shouted that the otherworldly boarding house did not welcome the poor and lazy and ordered them to leave. Ling Yui sighed tiredly and closed his eyes. He understood that if he did not show his strength, then they would all be wasting his time. Ling Yui held out a sign through the window stating that VIP clients come first and are served first. He angrily asked why their service consisted of yelling at customers who were paying their bills. The worker smiled disgustingly, revealing his snow-white teeth and tapped his finger on the table. He replied that this only works for VIP clients and he is just a new resident in the general area, and he does not have a penny on the card. He began to verbally mock Lang Yui, saying that by the end of the evening he would probably become a meatball in the restaurant and no VIP status would be given to him. Ling Yui irritably threw the sign aside and closed his eyes tiredly. 
He said displeasedly that it's not just that they say that the abominations are difficult to deal with, because their spiritual consciousness is too weak, and they have no vision at all. He dumped several stacks of green bills onto the service counter, asking who told them he couldn't pay his bills. The worker did not expect this from a newcomer and jumped back in shock. His jaw dropped and he couldn't believe it. His colleague, a bald ghost, blissfully opened his mouth and closed his eyes, enjoying such purian energy. He said that he could not remain resentful if he could have so much money. A ghost woman with long hair began to squirm flirtatiously and asked where this rich client came from. Ling Yui ordered to save 100,000 yuan for him with a smug face. He put his hand on all these bills and asked if he was now a VIP client. The worker turned even more pale with fear and began to take all the money that Ling Yui gave him. The ghost said in fear that he was now, of course, considered a VIP guest. The employee loaded all the money into the bandnote counter and the machine began to quickly count all the money. The ghost said blissfully that his ritual money had very pure yin energy. He grabbed the card and quickly swiped the magnetic stripe across the reader. The employee began to hurriedly type something on the keyboard and said that he would now replenish the Ling Yui balance by 100,000 yuan. He held out the card politely and helpfully with both hands. Ling Yui took her back. He saw that the current balance was displayed under his room number. When he discovered this, it became clear to him why this ghost was such a snob. Ling Yui turned around and walked towards the exit. The ghost behind the counter crouched down and said in an uncertain, trembling voice that he hoped the guy wouldn't complain about him. Ling Yui didn't even turn to look at him and just waved his hand, saying that he didn't have time to waste on a ghost. The worker bowed deeply and thanked him for his great kindness and said that he would never forget him. Ling Yui didn't even see this gesture as he was already leaving the room. He walked along the long and uniform corridor of the boarding house. The replenishment was completed and the game quest was completed. Ling Yui didn't know what to do next. He approached the golden door leading to the staircase. He thought that two other players were also walking around the boarding house somewhere, and he wondered what kind of people they were. Someone's hurried and loud steps were heard outside the door. Ling Yui glanced back at the elevator. He grinned and thought that people certainly chose the stairs, because if it weren't for Zhu Jiang, he wouldn't have gone to the elevator himself. A large man came out from behind the door. He had blonde hair combed back. He was wearing a white t-shirt, jeans and a vest. He had a weapon in his right hand, and his left hand was purple in color and covered with many red eyes. Ling Yui looked closely at the man and realized that he was a rank 4 hunter. The man turned to him in surprise and asked if he was a first rank hunter and if this floor was safe. Ling Yui calmly told him that it was safe here for now. The man exhaled in a relaxed manner and put his sword into its blue sheath. He began to take out some kind of bag from his vest. From a beige bag he took out a piece of fresh raw meat. The man fed it to the ghost that replaced his hand. The ghost opened his mouth wide with snow white teeth to swallow the meat. The ghost began to chew the meat with gusto. After the ghost ate everything, the man's hand began to take on a normal, human appearance. Ling Yui looked at all this and thought that fresh blood and flesh should be the price for making a contract with this crippled ghost. The man began to stretch his left arm and asked Ling Yui how he got down so quickly, and assumed that he had used the elevator, and then asked if it was dangerous there. Ling Yui told him that there is an evil ghost in the elevator who asks for one ritual coin, but even if he gives it, the ghost will find a reason to fight, even though he is not a strong fighter. He asked if the man had met anyone on his way down the stairs. The man immediately put on a serious face, sweat running down his forehead. He replied that the stairwell was unguarded. And according to the ghosts passing there, it was an illegal otherworld boarding house space occupied by six resentful ghosts and one evil ghost. He remembered how he encountered eerie spirits surrounding him on all sides. Most of them resembled disfigured, tall people, but one of them looked like a skeleton with a horn on its forehead. Then a memory of how he had to jump over huge spikes on the steps to escape a ghost snake with a huge mouth appeared in his head. He said that the ghost stopped and asked for money for cigarettes, and on some steps of the stairs there were traps and it was very difficult for him to deal with them. The man slowly walked out into the corridor. He looked up, looking around the multi-story boarding house with many identical corridors. The man said that in this otherworldly boarding house, ritual money is needed for trouble-free survival. Ling Yui agreed with him and replied that he was at the payment center. He showed with his hand where he was and said that to avoid a fine, you need to put at least 500 yuan on the card today and pay a total of 2,500 within three days and the information center also offers work so that they don't die. The man listened to all this, after which he thoughtfully crossed his arms over his chest and sighed. He repeated the entire amount that needed to be paid and said that he could afford it. This surprised Ling Yui. 
he thought with his hand on his chin. If you look at the offline fairs, it is difficult for players to get ritual money, and this person is also a rank 4 hunter. Ling Yui smiled and spread his hands. He said that he had already completed the replenishment and offered to accompany him to the payment center and then explore the floor together. The man stood with his arms crossed over his chest. He agreed to Ling Yui's proposal. Ling Yui lowered his hands and realized that the man thought that he was a first-rank rookie, so he had some room to roam. The man himself had already turned his back to him and was walking forward. They reached the payment center. The man walked up to the service window and put his card on the counter, saying that he wanted to pay his fee. The worker at first looked at him with disgust and was about to say something rude. But as soon as he saw Ling Yui with a menacing face next to him, he immediately became confused and began to stammer. Ling Yui looked down at the worker coldly. The employee turned very pale with fear and helpfully asked how much the replenishment would be. The man took out his bag and with a thoughtful face said that although the cost of the room was 25 o, there were probably other living expenses. He took out a handful of coins from the bag and shouted that he would top up the card with 27 o. Ling Yui had a hard time trying to hold back his laughter, because he himself was topping up the card with 100,000. The employee put the money into the bill counter and took one coin in his hands. He shouted with a dumbfounded face that these coins also had pure energy. His mouth was wide open and his eyebrows were raised high. He confirmed that it is 27-0 without errors. With both hands, he held out the card with the number 1111. The man took the card in his hand with a proud face and turned to Ling Yui. He told him that if he didn't have enough money to pay the rent yet, he could lend him the money in advance. Ling Yui certainly didn't need this. The man laughed joyfully and scratched the back of his head. He said that he met a high-ranking hunter and immediately hit it off with him. He insisted on giving the man one guan, and his coins are so valuable that one is worth as much as ten yuan. Ling Yui smiled awkwardly at him, giving him a thumbs up, realizing that the man had been talking about him all this time. The man put his hand on his shoulder and together they headed towards the exit. He asked his name and said that since he was only a rank 1 hunter but was able to take the elevator down, he was sure that he also had limitless potential. His name was Quan Dao, his nickname on the forum and in the game was the same. He suggested that we add him as a friend when we left. It was at this moment that Ling Yui became convinced that this was the same Quan Dao from the offline fair. Ling Yui understood that he could not introduce himself under the nickname Emperor Feng Du as on the forum, so he used a different name. With a calm face, he introduced himself, after which Quan Dao said that he had a cool name and offered to go. He patted Ling Yui on the shoulder several times, pointing his other hand forward. They went to the information center, it had mahogany double doors. Inside there were many screens with different advertisements. Most of them were written on blackboards, like in school, but there were also those that were displayed on the big screen. There was a counter in front of the large screen. Leng Yui decided to read some notices on the board. Someone from room 907 was selling secret medicines. Someone was offering a collection of all kinds of materials and asking those interested to contact room 1151. There was even an announcement about the missing yin rodent. The finder was asked to contact room 2203, after which he would be given a reward. A skinny old ghost was snoring behind the front desk. His appearance was reminiscent of workers from the payment department. There was information on the counter. A general advertisement cost 10 yuan at a time, with an additional price in a prominent place. They did not accept card purchases. Ling Yui looked around the entire room, standing near the counter, and said that this is quite logical. Because if someone does not have enough ritual money, he will have to sell things or work. Quan Dao looked at the information counter with a serious face and said that working in these shops part-time would definitely require more rules outside of the Otherworld guesthouse, and it would be more dangerous for the players. Ling Yui smiled and pointed to the counter with his hand. He said that luckily none of them would have to work part-time anymore. Hearing this, Quan Dao looked at him in surprise, because he didn't think that the guy, a first-rank hunter, had actually invested enough money. They left the information center and walked towards the elevators in the hallway. Quan Dao suggested going down to the first floor, because in the game they don't have regular food, so you'll still have to spend money on food and drink here for these three days. Ling Yui pressed the elevator call button and offered to take it down for convenience. It was noticeable that Quan Dao was a little scared and embarrassed. He scratched his head and said that although this was a good option, 
He was not sure if the ghost would give him change, since he had large denomination coins. Ling Yui did not respond to this. The elevator arrived at their third floor and slowly began to open its doors. Ling Yui came in first. The ghost that Xu Jiang had managed to cripple was already waiting for them in the elevator. The guy greeted the ghost familiarly and reminded him that he had promised not to charge him for using the elevator, and asked if he could come in with a friend. The ghost immediately tensed up, because he didn't want a repeat of the previous situation. Ling Yui's self-confidence stunned Quan Dao, who simply stood in the aisle for a while. They both ended up in the elevator. Quan Dao turned to the frightened ghost, who was trying to press himself as close as possible to the wall. He looked at the spirit and thought that Ling Yui was really not that simple. The offended ghost in the elevator is not considered weak, but so submissive in front of him. The ghost even began to sweat from tension and fear, trying not to look at people. Quan Dao looked at Ling Yui and began to think. He thought that Ling Yui either had a very strong resentful ghost, was armed with a yin weapon, or had hidden his strength. He opened his mouth slightly, not even knowing what to think. Ling Yui remained calm all this time and kept a barely noticeable smile on his face. The elevator quickly reached the first floor. The two of them walked out of it into a common corridor. There was even a children's playground in the hallway with slides and swings, where little ghosts had fun and constantly made silly laughs. Next to them stood adult ghosts who watched the children with a smile. Several ghosts turned towards the guys. The first had sharp cheekbones and a long jaw with crooked teeth, the second had long hair and large, round eyes, and the third was a child with a wide face and green skin. They circled around the guys walking along the corridor, but did not attack them. They were all angry and resentful ghosts. They should not break the rules unless provoked. First, Ling Yui and Quan Dao walked past the laundry. It resembled the laundry they were used to in the real world. Nearby there was a supermarket with a corresponding sign and a food court with tables where ghosts walked. All these places occupied a third of the first floor. Ling Yui looked around the entire floor and realized that there was no door to the outside world. Quan Dao didn't even think about it at first. He scratched the back of his head and looked down. The man said that they could not leave here and suggested that they go to the supermarket first. Ling Yui calmly agreed with him, looking towards the store. He wasn't in a state to think about it that much right now. Quan Dao entered the supermarket first, followed by Ling Yui. There was a ghostly girl with pink hair standing at the checkout counter. She greeted the visitors. Ling Yui smelled the unpleasant smell that filled the store and then covered his nose with his hand. It was a putrid yin stench. Quan Dao first took some buns from the shelf. He closed his eyes and said that this product costs 15 yuan, but nothing can be done because you can't go without food if you want to continue to fight, so he will try it. They walked over to the drink's shelf. Quan Dao took a bottle of water and raised his eyebrows and lowered the corners of his mouth in horror. The water in the bottle was very cloudy and dirty. Ling Yui made a disgusted expression and expressed his disgust. Quan Dao took a huge package of toilet paper with five large rolls, saying that he would definitely need that too. Ling Yui tried hard not to laugh. Quan Dao, with all the goods in his hands, went to the checkout and asked Ling Yui why he wasn't taking anything for himself. The guy smiled at him and waved, saying that he was in no hurry yet. The ghostly saleswoman went through all the goods and announced the amount of 103 yuan. While Quan Dao took out the card to pay, he thought that a rank 1 hunter could hardly collect 25 oh ritual money, and he probably simply didn't have any money left for food and drink. The saleswoman held out all the goods in the bag and gave them to Quan Dao. He took the bag in his hands and turned to Ling Yui, saying that in that case he would return to the room and put away his things, and asked what Ling Yui would do. The guy answered him that he would study the area here for now. Quan Dao sighed sadly and closed his eyes. He decided that Ling Yui was going to work in order to earn money for food, and simply did not want to tell Quan Dao about this, so as not to ruin his self-esteem. They walked out of the supermarket and Quan Dao put his arm around Ling Yui's shoulder. He told him that he was staying in room 1111 and that the guy could come see him if he needed anything. Quan Dao entered the elevator and finally leaned out of it to invite Ling Yui to join him again. The guy didn't answer him, feeling awkward. He realized that Quan had made something up in his head about him. As soon as the man was out of sight, Ling Yui himself walked to the elevator and pressed the call button. He decided to go to the luxury store on the second floor. Ling Yui quickly entered the elevator as it arrived. There he was met by a ghost who was very similar to the one who lived in the next elevator. He, too, was shaking with fear, asking which floor the VIP guest needed to go to. Ling Yui turned to look at him and asked himself if he had learned about him from his ghost colleague. Ling Yui stood firmly and clenched his fists, answering that he needed to go to the second floor. The ghost asked him to hold on. 
The elevator arrived on the second floor. Ling Yui calmly walked out of it. He ended up in the floor hall. There were red carpets on the floors, glass frames and columns were gold in color, and ghosts walked around in fashionable, sophisticated and expensive clothes. This could not but cause a pleasant surprise in the guy. He approached the doors of an elite store, whose huge sign was also made of gold. There were two ghost consultants standing at the entrance. One of them had blue hair, and the second had pink hair. They were wearing a red blouse and a black knee-length skirt. Ling Yui said happily that it all looked good. The store doors were open and Ling Yui walked towards the entrance. Suddenly the consultant stopped him, made a contemptuous expression on her face, and greeted the guy. She said the store operates on a membership basis and does not serve the general public. Ling Yui was not satisfied with this answer. He calmly asked how much the membership costs. The consultant, turning her head to the side, replied that there was no membership fee, and he automatically became a member of the store when his card balance reached a certain amount. The guy took the card out of his pocket and handed it to the girl, asking if this would be enough. The ghost didn't even have time to look at the balance. She immediately wanted to drive him away. She had a disgusting and arrogant expression on her face. She took a closer look at Lang Yui's card. Her pupils constricted, her eyes opened wide, and her mouth twisted in shock. At first she saw 10,000, but then she saw the real amount of 100,000. Her colleague immediately shouted that he was already a member of the store and he could go inside. Both girls bowed deeply, and the ghost, who did not want to let him in, remained silent out of shame. Lang Yui walked proudly into the store. He grabbed a brown grocery cart and went first to the fruit section. Inspecting the expensive and high-quality goods, Lang Yui said sympathetically that compared to this, Quan Dao bought goods that could only be thrown away. He picked up a steak that said it was the best leg meat from an evil ghost beast. Price, 600 Lang Yui said that if you give this to Zhu Jiang, you can make a ghost meal that is as good as Jiang Nan's. He threw the goods into his cart. A system window appeared. Task 3, keep spending and be sincere. Not done yet. Task, make three purchases in which the cost of the object exceeds 100,000 yuan, and the benefit is five times greater than the cost, and there must also be no active price increase, zero out of three. Task Reward, Cash Back Card, 5 Yin Ling Yuan Juices, 10 Soul Retention Talismans, 10 Soul Destruction Talismans. Ling Yui smiled as he read this task. He rolled his cart through the shopping arcades and thought that rarely anyone could spend a lot of money here, and he couldn't afford to be petty. The guy grabbed the handle of the cart tightly. He quickly began throwing a huge amount of goods into his cart, sweeping everything off the shelves. A consultant with big cheeks peeked out from behind the shelf. She was impressed and said that he chooses the most expensive products in the category. Her colleague, a girl with a bun on her head, answered her that he was so young, and he probably came from a very rich family. He threw a drink in an expensive decanter called Wildlife for 15,000 yuan and a wine called King Yin Soul Drink for 8,000 yuan into his cart saying that Zhu Jiang would like it. After he checked out the items at the checkout, he sighed sadly. Taking the card out of his pocket, he thought that after buying so many things, it only came out to 56,000 yuan. And after all, the supermarket has its limits. The cashier was left in complete shock by Ling Yui. A very short and round ghost in a business suit came out to the guy. He greeted the elite guest from room 1202 and introduced himself as the manager of this store. Ling Yui turned to him and asked what was the matter. The manager approached his cart and said that they were honored by his patronage and would like to give him a small gift in return. Two ghosts in uniform carried a large gift box into the sales area. The manager opened the box, revealing a large green knife with gold trim. He said it was a gift box of utensils from the revolving restaurant on the 30th floor and he figured he would need it with all the ingredients he bought. The ghost added that even boarding house members find it difficult to purchase this because it is a product exclusively for club members. A system window appeared. A middle-class second category yin weapon had been detected, automatically linked to the owner. Do you want to equip a ghostly creature with your kitchen knife? Ling Yui was pleasantly surprised. He couldn't believe that this was the middle class of the second category. He decided to immediately give the weapon to Zhu Jiang. His ghost immediately appeared behind him, shocking the manager. Zhu Jiang took the knife in his hands and looked at it. He said it was a good thing. After he was equipped with the weapon, he immediately disappeared, leaving behind red aura ribbons in the air. The manager was scared and sweated with excitement, feeling a strong aura. He walked to the cart and asked in a trembling voice whether to send these things to Ling Yui's room. The guy agreed, and the ghost in uniform rolled the cart towards the exit. The manager ordered him to roll it more slowly so as not to damage the VIP guest's belongings. Ling Yui made a thoughtful face and put his hand on his chin. 
he asked what he needed to do if he wanted to become a member of the other world and join the other world council. The manager's jaw dropped to the floor in shock. He asked if he really wanted the membership of the other world and the council. Ling Yui looked down at him arrogantly and responded positively, asking him a rhetorical question, saying, who wouldn't want to enjoy the privileges that are available to them? He understood that in order to complete the system quest, he must move to a higher league at greater expense. Only they have access to the closed floors from 26 to 29 in the revolving restaurant, so he had to act. The manager turned pale with fear and answered in a trembling voice that he did not know exactly how to become a member of the council, but he had heard a little about how to become a member of the other world. He sighed sadly and looked away, saying that this condition was much more difficult than being a member of their high-end store. Ling Yui calmly asked him to talk about it. The ghost raised one eyebrow and showed the number three with his fingers. According to him, there are three ways to become a member of the other world, and it doesn't matter which method he uses. But in any case, the guy needs to pay a membership fee of 150,000 yuan. Ling Yui exhaled in a relaxed manner and smiled. He replied that the contribution would not be a problem for him. The ghost raised his head and said that the first option that most of their members choose is to contribute to the public affairs of the other world. This must be someone who has worked diligently for many years at the other world boarding house with consistently outstanding results. Such employees are given a certificate of honor. Or it must be the one who stopped a number of heinous incidents that would have been detrimental to the interests of the boarding house. For example, in this case, a certificate may be issued as the best security guard. Also, if he wants to say something very useful and constructive, he can be accepted as a member of the club. Ling Yui imagined in his head how a ghost in an expensive suit performed on stage and everyone clapped for him. Ling Yui thought as he looked away. He had to leave the quest in three days. He had too little time for all this. The manager interrupted his thoughts and began to talk about the second method, a tenant referendum. After submitting an application for membership, the real estate center will hold a referendum of all residents and business owners on whether the applicant can become a member of the other world. If more than half of them agree, the applicant will become a member. Lang Yui lowered his head and crossed his arms over his chest. He asked about the third way. The manager's eyes sparkled just thinking about it and he broke into a smile. He said that he had only heard about the third method. It is said that if more than 10 members of the other world or three members of the council jointly invite him, then he can become a full member of the other world. Ling Yui smiled as if something had dawned on him. This method suited him, because it is much easier to bribe people from the third method than to wait for the referendum and its results. The task is only to reach out to other members. Ling Yui thanked the manager and handed him a 50 ritual money note for his hard work. The manager happily accepted the money answering that it was his responsibility. He bowed low with a wide smile and wished him a pleasant stay, saying that he would immediately send someone to his room. Ling Yui walked out of the store with his hands in his pockets. He entered the elevator, where the elevator ghost was already waiting for him. He made a chair for him, which Ling Yui sat on and began to think about whether this time he would be able to solve everything with money, but decided to try anyway. The guy arrived on the third floor. As soon as the doors opened, he saw Quan Dao with some guy he didn't know. He was shorter than Quan Dao by a head, was a little plump and wore glasses. He was wearing breeches, a beige t-shirt and was carrying a bag. Ling Yui came out of the elevator to meet them. He looked at the guy, realizing that this was another player, and judging by Ling Yui's spiritual consciousness, he had not even reached a fifth of the strength of a rank one hunter. The unfamiliar guy immediately stepped aside to let Ling Yui pass. Ling Yui was afraid that this quest would be very difficult for the guy to survive alone. Quan Dao smiled widely and greeted Ling Yui, asking how he ended up here too. He patted the new player on the shoulder and then put his arm around his shoulder. Ling Yui told him that he went to the store for information and was now heading to the real estate center to check everything. Quan Dao immediately became embarrassed as he imagined Ling Yui pitifully submitting his resume for a job at a real estate center. He thought that Ling Yui didn't want to hurt his self-esteem again by saying that he didn't have enough money, so Quan Dao decided not to ask too many questions. He smiled and said that he met this little guy on the 11th floor. He only completed the game twice, so he didn't even become a hunter. The guy smiled awkwardly and lowered his head slightly. Ling Yui smiled slightly and looked away. He didn't think that Quan Dao would believe that he was also a newcomer. Ling Yui said that it was really bad luck and asked if Quan Dao took him with him to pay the bills. Quan Dao replied that now the guy has no money, and he is going to take him to the information center so that he can find a job. The guy bowed uncertainly and said that he was counting on Quan Dao. Ling Yui looked at them again one last time. 
Huan Dao looked very noble. He was really going to help the guy. The guy awkwardly pressed his hand to his chest. Ling Yui thought that if this player only hides behind others instead of increasing his strength, he will die even more miserably next time. Ling Yui raised his fist in the air and wished good luck to the players. The newcomer and Quan Dao headed towards the elevator. Ling Yui quickly ran down the corridor, thinking that he should also take the opportunity to make the most of his powers through this quest. He opened the door to the real estate center. It was an ordinary office, ghost workers were sitting at the computers, and an old ghost woman was sitting at the information desk. Next to the counter were expensive leather sofas. He looked at the old woman and realized that she was actually a stern ghost. She had gray hair neatly tied into a bun. She wore gold earrings and a blue blouse and had very long nails. An old lady came out from the information desk to greet and meet the guest. She smiled friendly, showing her crooked teeth, and introduced herself. She was an employee on duty at the Otherworld Guesthouse's real estate center. The old lady asked how she could help the guy. He silently walked past her and headed towards the sofas, leaving her bewildered. Ling Yui sat down imposingly on the sofa and crossed one leg over the other. He said that he would like to apply for membership in the Otherworld boarding house. The old woman turned around in fear and looked at him. She quickly sat down on the opposite sofa and politely asked him to wait while she checked his contribution or offered to immediately show her the letter of recommendation. Ling Yui shook his head and replied that he did not need such methods. He reached out to his pocket and first asked the system to give him 15,000, but then quickly changed his mind and asked to give him 15 bills with a face value of 100,000 ritual money. The guy handed the old lady a stack of band notes. She sighed wearily and looked away, saying that unfortunately he had to fulfill other conditions before paying the entry fee after which she quietly whispered that he only handed over a thin stack of money. Hearing this, Ling Yui threw all the bills into the air, and they began to fly around the office. The employees looked up from their work and looked up with their mouths open. The old lady was also confused, because she did not understand how the band notes could burst with such strong yin energy. One bill flew right in front of her face, and as soon as she saw that it was a denomination of 100,000 ritual money, she opened her mouth wide and tensed. Ling Yui smiled, frowning slightly, and said that there is a total of one and a half million yuan, which is ten times the membership fee. He directed all the bills with his hand towards the confused old woman. She immediately jumped up from her seat and began hastily catching all the bills in the air, apologizing for this. She said it was her fault that she was too old to see. Ling Yui relaxed back on the sofa and said that he intended to make a donation to the otherworldly guesthouse as a contribution. The old lady, who had already collected all the money, asked in shock about the donation and contribution. Her mouth was wide open and her eyebrows were raised high. Ling Yui smiled and extended his hand to her, asking if he could become a member of the club with that fee. The old woman stood on the sofa, holding the bills in her hand, and said in a trembling voice that she would now ask the head of the council. She went behind the front desk and called him. She said that they have a new resident who would like to become a member, but he is not a regular user. He is a newbie who offered them a million and a half as a contribution. Ling Yui periodically glanced in her direction. The old woman opened her mouth wide and turned pale, adding that each of the bills had a denomination of 100,000. As soon as she finished the conversation, the old lady walked up to Ling Yui and said that a council member would personally meet with him later to help him transition to the other world council membership. Ling Yui previously read on the forum that the denomination of ritual money is determined by the yin content, and that a 100,000 yuan note means that they are more difficult to produce and are issued less. The old lady smiled helpfully at Ling Yui and bowed slightly to him. He was sure that the fact that the ghosts in the boarding house agreed so easily, and even the leader would come in person, had something to do with it. He exhaled in a relaxed manner and lay down on the back of the sofa, because the process turned out to be even easier than expected. The door to the office slowly began to open. A white-faced ghost wearing a floor-length black robe entered the room. As soon as he approached them, the old woman called him master and bowed deeply. A council member asked if the guy wanted to become a member of the other world club. He confidently told him that he really wanted it and smiled. The old woman handed the bills into the hands of a council member. He took a closer look at them. His pupils immediately shrank and his mouth opened wide when he realized that these were indeed 100,000 bills. He sat down on the sofa opposite Ling Yui and asked with a serious face what he wanted to do after coming to the guesthouse and spending a lot of money. The old woman stood next to him. Ling Yui spread his arms and replied that since this is a boarding house, he will naturally stay here, and since he has money, of course he wants the best. 
he added that some of their services here are only available to club members, which is why he wants to become one. He pointed to the bills in the council member's hand and asked if his donation was enough. The councilman tucked the bills under his robe and replied that he was the first to make a donation. A system window appeared, saying that part of the task had been completed, one out of three, and the rewards for complete completion appeared again. Ling Yui smiled, thinking that this actually counted towards the task. At the council member's phrase, he smiled and leaned his elbows on the armrest of the sofa, saying that the others really couldn't enjoy it. His answer made both the old woman and the council member turn pale. They were very embarrassed, and the leader thought that according to the guy, the power of one and a half million is available to everyone and in all the years of work in the council, he had never seen such an uncouth guy. He pulled out a card with gold details and the number 2643 from his robe, beginning to talk about the privileges of upgrading his membership status. The club member card is his exclusive card and identification card. At the same time, he will get a new room on the 26th floor and no longer have a curfew with hygiene restrictions. However, Ling Yui should be careful not to make noise or open doors without permission, and not to invade other people's rooms. He handed the golden card to Ling Yui. The guy, taking the card, asked if floors 26 to 29 were open to him. The council member answered him positively. He put his fist to his chin and said that he lived on the 27th floor, where the boarding house's board of directors was located. On the 28th floor there is a place for selling products, which is open only to club members. On the 29th floor there is a member activity center where members can enjoy gambling, dueling and other entertainment and even some special services. When the councilman talked about special services, he smiled playfully. This made Ling Yui a little embarrassed, but he didn't want to seem rude. The revolving restaurant will also give him priority reserved seating and open up a top floor of private rooms and special offers. Ling Yui, looking at the map, said that this was all very cool. The board member asked if he had any more questions. He narrowed his eyes, looking sternly at Ling Yui. Ling Yui looked up carefree, placing his hand on his chin. He replied that he had one question. The guy crossed his left leg over his right, crossed his arms and asked if the ghost was selling his place as a representative of the Council of Another World, since Ling Yui bought the membership for one and a half million. This question stunned the old woman and the council member. The man stood up abruptly and loudly replied that the position of the council representative was under no circumstances for sale, no matter how much money he was offered. He began to walk in circles around the room, reasoning out loud about the fact that now in the otherworldly boarding house there are hundreds of members, but only 13 representatives, and in order to become a member of the Council of Representatives, one must pass a series of tests. This made Ling Yui puzzled, but he was not taken aback and smiled with excitement, taking out another stack of bills. He asked about the test and then said that he would be able to contribute during the test. He made a money sign with his fingers, which caught the council members' attention. The man, embarrassed, frowned and replied that if Ling Yu really needed it, he would contact him tomorrow after negotiations with the other council members. Ling Yui stood up from the sofa and hid one hand in his pocket, thinking about how good it would be to achieve such heights with just money. He approached the council member and extended his hand, saying that he would wait to hear from him. The councilman said nothing and extended his hand. They shook hands firmly. Ling Yui then left, slamming the door. The old woman nervously held her chest, and the council member sat down tiredly on the sofa, exhaling. He was glad that Ling Yui had finally left. The old woman asked in a frightened whisper who this guy was. He shook his head and replied that he was not sure, his scent seemed to be that of a ghost man, the so-called player. The old lady was taken aback and asked if he was a human player. The council member lowered his head and clasped his hands together, saying that no person could have won and a half million in afterlife money, especially in 100,000 denomination notes. The ability to produce coins of this denomination implies strong control over yin energy. According to the council member, Ling Yui is definitely not an ordinary person. He imagined the huge Ling Yui picking up the otherworldly guesthouse building and moving it around like a board game. He thought that the human side would never come here by chance, and the world of ghosts should not have been of any value to him at all, unless he came to them for a meeting in another world. But they did not know whether this was appeasement or scouting. This was something he really needed to discuss with the other council members, so he headed into the elevator. Ling Yui himself arrived on the 12th floor. He walked down the corridor to his room, next to which there was a gift box. He sighed wearily, saying that if he had known that he would need to change rooms, he would not have allowed them to deliver the purchases to the 12th floor. Ling Yui wanted to move closer to his room, but suddenly someone quickly started running around him. 
three ghosts resembling teenagers ran up to the gift box and surrounded it. Ling Yui looked at them in surprise and wondered if they could be the stairwell ghosts that Quen Dao was talking about, and then wondered what brought them here. A ghost girl with pink hair and a long tongue tapped the box with a satisfied face and shouted that, as she said, the seller delivered everything to the twelfth floor. A ghost boy with brown hair and a long jaw looked at the box and asked how the poor guy living on this floor could afford all these things. Another ghost boy with one eye asked who managed to accumulate a fortune and assumed that he wanted to get a promotion. The ghost girl closed her eyes and ran her hand through her hair, saying that since the owner had not returned yet, they would simply steal things, because there was nothing in the rules against theft. She put her hands on her hips and added that if they took them, they would go through the boss on the stairwell, and asked if the guy dared to follow them. The short ghost with one eye told her that even if he dared, he would regret it even more. Ling Yui stood and looked at them. He shook his head from side to side and sighed tiredly when he realized that it was just a few greedy children. He took a step forward and called out to them. The ghosts turned sharply to him. Ling Yui approached them and asked what they were doing. The girl began to tease and replied that they were doing something that did not concern him, and began to drive him away. Ling Yui looked at them displeasedly and said that they were targeting his things. The ghosts were taken aback and even backed away a little, asking if he, a hunter of the first rank, was a resident of room 1206. The girl tensed and turned pale, beginning to swallow nervously. After that, she smiled evilly and replied that he could have simply lied and they, too, could say that these were their things. The ghost with a long jaw turned and angrily said that these were their things. The girl crossed her arms over her chest and coughed. The ghosts began to tease Ling Yui, shouting that this was their box. Ling Yui thought that if there were security here, they would never dare to do this. The ghosts winked at each other and picked up the box, giggling. The girl grabbed the box by the side, and they all ran to the door to the stairwell. Ling Yui put his hands in his pockets and followed them. He calmly walked into the stairwell. The children were already ready to open the box. The girl took out a stationary knife and was about to open the things. But Ling Yui interrupted them with his presence. The elongated jawed ghost opened its mouth wide and was surprised that it had come for them. Behind him stood a short ghost who was very confused. The girl frowned and pointed the knife towards Ling Yui. She said that the guy was a little arrogant, since he voluntarily climbed the stairwell, which is their territory. Ling Yui began to approach the children and said that it was unclear whether this was their territory. However, he also needed a place without surveillance, because then he would have to deal with problems. He looked at them and smiled slightly. He pointed his finger at the knife in the hands of the frightened girl and asked what she was going to do with him. Would she really cut his fruit? She got angry and ordered the guy to shut up, because when she cuts his soul into pieces, he won't think like that. Ling Yui snapped his fingers and summoned Zhu Jiao. A huge ghost appeared behind him, surrounded by smoke. The children were taken aback. Looking at the menacing man, they began to back away from fear. Zhu Jong began to take out his red knife. He raised the weapon burning with red fire above his head and shouted that the knife that could cut souls looked like this. The girl dropped the utility knife, trembling with fear. She ran down the stairs with tears in her eyes and asked her boss for help. Zhu Jong was not taken aback and threw the knife. He hit the girl right in the back, causing her to fall and scream. The boy with an elongated jaw also ran downstairs, shouting that they needed to leave quickly. The short ghost also began to hastily descend the steps. Ling Yui was covered in a purple aura and raised his right hand with the pharaoh armband. He said that since they wanted to escape, he would try to do something. He extended his hand forward. The bandage began to unwind and went after the ghosts. She surrounded two boys who were running up the stairs. The bandage grabbed them tightly and knocked them to the floor. The one-eyed boy began to cry and beg for mercy, and his friend ordered to let him go immediately, otherwise his boss would not leave the guy unpunished. Ling Yui and Zhu Jiang began to descend towards them. Ling Yui looked at them displeasedly and sighed. They went downstairs to the children. The guy asked Zhu Jiang how he liked his new knife. Zhu Jiang himself approached the girl who had this knife sticking out of her back. He took it out and happily told Ling Yui that he loved this knife, and now it could not only help him in battle but also take care of food in the future. The girl screamed in pain and cried. Zhu Jiang bent down and took out the rope. He was glad that the three ingredients fell into his hands, because he could once again cook a dish with ghosts. Ling Yui removed his bandage and it began to tighten around his wrist. He looked at the ghosts a little confused and thought that last time he ate out of necessity, but now the situation is different. 
Zhu Jiang smiled and gave him a thumbs up, saying that based on the experience from last time, this time he could guarantee that the taste and smell would be perfect, and that it would nourish spiritual consciousness and strength to help strengthen his power. Ling Yui looked at him enthusiastically. Ling Yui closed his eyes and thanked Zhu Jiang a little embarrassedly. The ghosts, meanwhile, tied up their prey. He picked up the bound ghosts and said that three offended ghosts were still not enough to cook several dishes. Ling Yui turned his head and smiled, saying that this is not certain yet. Someone from above kicked a box of things and loudly asked who dared to touch his younger brothers and sisters. Ling Yui and Zhu Jiang turned around to see who was coming towards them. A wide ghost with a bat descended towards them, followed by his retinue. The girl began to laugh maliciously and said that their boss had come and Zhu Jiang and Ling Yui would die. Zhu Jiang began to shake with anger, Ling Yui looked at him with a smirk. The contracted ghost immediately ran forward with his knife and shouted that he would come soon. A few minutes later, the boss's bat broke in half in the air. Zhu Jiang asked mockingly, saying that this was their boss. He dragged the ghost by the hair down the stairs towards Ling Yui who was standing next to his box. He said that today they would have a feast. Ling Yui handed the box of things to him and said that he had bought two bottles of good wine and other ingredients, so he was counting on the ghost. Zhu Jiang was very happy about the wine. He took the box and tears of happiness flowed from his eyes. Zhu Jiang began to thank his master. They began to climb up the stairs, leading the bound, offended ghosts behind them. Ling Yui understood that there were a lot of people in the elevator lobby, so it was better for them not to show up again. Zhu Jiang stepped on the trap, but it immediately broke under the weight of his body. The ghosts who saw them on the staircase were terribly frightened. They turned pale and trembled with fear, not risking attacking them. Zhu Jiang and Ling Yui calmly walked up to the 26th floor. Ling Yui put his hands behind his head and said that it was quite a peaceful journey. As soon as they left the stairwell, they found themselves at a turnstile with a sign stating that only members of the club were allowed to enter. Ling Yui swiped his gold card with the number 2643, and the turnstile opened. They found themselves in a luxurious hall with a glass ceiling. There were trees and decorative stones around them, everything sparkled with cleanliness. Zhu Jiang looked around and said that there is a powerful artifact here that expands space contrary to the laws of physics. Ling Yui opened his mouth in surprise and said that it was truly luxurious here. He opened the door to his room. Together with Zhu Jiang, they went inside and found a luxurious room with its own kitchen dining room and sitting area with sofas and coffee tables. Something caught the guy's attention and he looked there in amazement. He walked up to the huge picture window and saw a view of the ghost world. The sky was red and the clouds were twisting in spirals. The souls of hungry ghosts flew along the earth. The smallest ghosts crawled nearby. Ling Yui was a little tense and thought that the ghost world was cruel and crazy. Here, even ghostly creatures become food for the stronger ones. Ling Yui continues to stand at the window and look at the views of this world. He thought that ghosts, limited by the rules of a thriller, were more friendly to human players. He was interrupted from his thoughts by Zhu Jiang, who was holding a plate with a dish in his hands and inviting him to a meal. He approached the table and saw a huge array of delicious dishes and a bottle of wine. The guy expressed his delight. He gave his ghost a thumbs up and praised him, saying that his talent was hidden in the afterlife inn. Zhu Jiang laughed embarrassedly and scratched the back of his head. He smiled timidly and replied that the innkeeper was not like Ling Yui and was wary of him because she was afraid that he might do something to her. He opened a bottle of wine and poured it into a glass. The ghost politely handed the glass to Ling Yui, who was already sitting at the table, and told him that he owed his progress and skill to inspiration from the owner, who gave him new kitchen utensils. Ling Yui happily spread his arms and said that there was no need for politeness, and invited Zhu Jiang to eat and drink with him. The ghost smiled, holding a bottle of wine. A red moon with an ominous face appeared outside. Ling Yui was in his bedroom, sitting on his bed. It was announced that there were still three survivors. The guy said the first day was over and it looked like Quan Dao and that new guy were okay. Ling Yui looked forward seriously and ordered the system to open the panel. A system window appears, current level, first rank ghost lord. Spiritual Awareness, 47. Spiritual Power, 486. Once you reach 50 Spiritual Awareness and 500 Spiritual Power, you can become a Rank 2 Ghost Lord. He extended his hand forward as if touching something. They say on the forum that subjugating a ghost is a difficult task, and the closer you get to the end, the more difficulties there are. Either they use yin materials with extreme side effects, or they unleash their potential in deadly situations. Ling Yui smiled slyly and thought that for him, an almost infinite amount of money could bring an unlimited amount of yin ingredients, and with Zhu Jiang already there, the preliminary difficulty is not an obstacle at all. 
an image of goods from a high-end store appeared in front of his hand. He clenched his hand into a fist and realized that he could rummage around in the side apartments of the boarding house and find some materials. Ling Yui headed towards the exit and said that he needed to replenish his supplies. He walked out to the elevator lobby, where Quan Dao and the newcomer walked towards him. Quan Dao waved to the guy and greeted him with a smile. Ling Yui smiled back at him and asked why he was so happy and if anything good had happened. Quan Dao hugged the newcomer and replied that they had stumbled upon a bug. Ling Yui asked in confusion what kind of bug it was. Quan Dao winked at the guy and raised his index finger. He asked if he remembered the curfew rules, and then said that he had found a way to avoid it. Ling Yui initially thought that they were also asking about membership, and he couldn't afford to be exposed, so he made a puzzled face and asked what method he found. Quan Dao pointed his finger back, holding the newcomer at his side and said that yesterday they received a hidden part-time job from the old man at the information center. You can use your night pass to travel freely after curfew if you work the night shift and stay at the store to work. He also added that there are fewer ghosts at night and wages are higher than during the day. The newcomer had a terribly exhausted and tired face. He said that it was by working at night that he was able to save enough money to pay 500 yuan for the first day of his stay. Ling Yui tried to pretend that he heard something useful, saying that it was not bad. This information is not completely useless, but at least it suggests that some stores are open at night. Quan Dao took out a flat comb from his pocket and said that yesterday they worked on the second floor of the store and received goods that did not pass quality control at staff prices. The item was close to the standard of a low-grade yin weapon, but only cost 300 ritual money. He began to comb his hair with a satisfied look and said that although this part-time job may seem like it was created to earn money for living, in fact it is a much greater opportunity for them. Ling Yui asked if he was going to work at a high-end store now. If it turns out that they really go there, then Ling Yui will have to postpone her shopping plan. But Quan Dao and the newcomer seemed to fall asleep on the move. They wearily trudged towards their rooms, and Quan Dao replied that no, and they should have time to sleep during the day. But the manager at the luxury store saw how hard they worked, and therefore promised them a better paying job that evening. He asked if Ling Yui would come. The guy shook his head negatively and smiled. He has a fortune of a trillion afterlife money. He had no need to work. He arrived at the payment center. Ling Yui slammed his hand on the service counter, drawing attention to himself. With this gesture, he scared the worker who served him the last time. Ling Yui looked at him and asked if the balance on his original card could be transferred to the new one after upgrading his membership status. The worker answered in a trembling voice that it was possible. With a pale and worried face, he took the Ling Yui golden card in his hands. He was shocked that the guy actually became a member of the club. The worker began to type something important on the keyboard while Ling Yui was waiting for him on the other side. The ghost turned to him with a scared face and asked if there was anything else he wanted to do. Ling Yui replied in the affirmative. After that, he ordered the system to issue 110,000 bills. His hand became covered in flames. He put a wad of green bills on the table and asked to top up his balance by a million. The employee with a forced smile on his face wanted to calmly confirm the amount, but involuntarily shouted it out loud. His eyes widened sharply and his pupils constricted. He immediately covered his mouth with his hand and looked at Ling Yui in embarrassment. Ghost couldn't believe he accidentally shouted that and hoped that Ling Yui wouldn't complain about him. Despite this, Ling Yui only asked with a calm face to quickly top up his account. The worker began to nod and answered in the affirmative. Ling Yui looked at him and thought that these little resentful ghosts are really like ants in the vast world of ghosts. Ling Yui arrived at the high-end store. He filled a cart full of groceries and walked through the shopping aisles. The manager forced the employee to bend over and stood on her neck. Ling Yui held out his card with a bored face. The manager, with a pale face, took it in his hands and exclaimed that he could not believe that he was already a member of the club, saying that he was so young and talented. The worker was shaking under the weight of the manager's body, but he continued to stand on her. He said that since Ling Yui is already a member of the club, he recommends visiting the revolving restaurant upstairs. It is run by his cousin. It has a beautiful environment and excellent food. The level of service is more upscale than their store. The last sentence caught Ling Yui's attention. His face looked interested and he said that he should really go there. The manager smiled friendly and said that if he went, he would ask his cousin to give him a discount. Ling Yui waved his palm up and down and said with a disapproving face that he didn't need a discount and don't let the manager look down on him. The manager's ears twitched and a tear began to flow from his eye. Looking at Ling Yui, he thought that this person's calm and confidence was beyond his understanding. He told him that he would definitely inform his cousin to save all the most valuable ingredients for him. 
Ling Yui walked out of the store and dropped the bag of groceries so that they immediately ended up in his inventory. His thoughts were about having a drink in a nice restaurant tonight. He reached his 26th floor. A beautiful blonde stood near his room, dressed in a white shirt and a black pencil skirt. She anointed him and asked if he was a resident of room 2643. He looked at her in shock and asked himself if she had come for him. The girl bowed and introduced herself. Her name was Bai Zhu, and she was the secretary of the fifth counselor of the other world guest house. The girl said that the fifth advisor decided to meet with him this evening to discuss cooperation. She timidly looked at the guy from under her brows and asked what he thought about it. The guy smiled at her and replied that he was planning to have dinner at the revolving restaurant that evening and suggested that he talk to her over dinner if she didn't mind. Bai Zhu asked him to wait a moment and picked up the jade pendant hanging around her neck. When she touched it, the pendant glowed and a blue aura surrounded it. Ling Yui looked at the pendant in surprise and realized that it was something like a telephone. The pendant in the girl's hands was surrounded by clouds of smoke. The blue aura from the pendant enveloped Bai Zhu's wrist. The fifth advisor told her that they would be waiting for him today at 10 p.m. in a private room, Red Moon, on the 32nd floor. Ling Yui smiled at her, tilting his head slightly and replied that he would treat them to a nice dinner. The secretary was a little embarrassed, thinking that the guy was really rich. She was already going about her business when suddenly Ling Yui called out to her and asked her to wait. She turned around looking worried and asked what happened. Ling Yui pointed his finger at her and asked how much it cost approximately. The girl misunderstood him. Blushing deeply, Bai Zhu looked at her chest. The secretary immediately covered her with her hands and said that she was not selling her body. Ling Yui looked at her questioningly. The girl added that if he has special needs, then he can be content with entertainment on the 29th floor. Ling Yui was puzzled, and he said with a confused face that he only wanted to ask how much the jade pendant that allows long-distance communication costs. The girl mentally breathed a sigh of relief. She, still covered in blush, replied that it was given to her by the fifth advisor and it was priceless. She suggested asking her in the evening. The advisor would be there with two other advisors. Bai Zhu embarrassedly said goodbye to him and ran away. Ling Yui was left puzzled. He thought that in the ghost world, beauty is still a sin that must be born, and even a decent guy like him might one day be misunderstood. Despite this, he still decided to go and see the entertainment on the 29th floor someday. He crossed his arms and began to think about it. Ling Yui decided that there would definitely be gambling, which would be a great way to spend his money, but also perhaps a chance to practice in a real fight. He smoothed his hair with his hand and thought about the fact that the meeting with the three advisors would take place in the evening, and although it was not expected to be too dangerous, it was important to be fully prepared for it. Quan Dao stood in the elevator lobby and called out to Avin, that same newcomer. Avin himself hurriedly ran towards him. He looked fearfully at Quan Dao and asked if they were really going to work upstairs, because it must be very dangerous there. Quan Dao looked at him gloomily and replied that this is a quest game and there is no safe place here. It is impossible to survive another quest without taking advantage of every opportunity to become stronger. 